Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto was Biju Sage Saiyan in Dragon Ball. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Master of the Unknown and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Orbiting high above the blue and green planet of Earth was a giant white spherical object. The object was surrounded by trillions of stars and it gave off a white glow upon the darkened surface of the Earth. This object was known as the moon to everyone on Earth, but to one certain person and a few others, a single being was sealed inside this stone prison. This person had hair that was so golden, it looked like the sun had laid a gentle kiss upon his head. Three marks were on each cheek, and his eyes were just as blue as the oceans on Earth. His outfit was a crimson cloak with black flames licking at the bottom of it. Underneath the cloak was a green jowning jacket, and on his waist were multiple three-pointed knives with paper on the handles. His pants were dark and he had combat boots over his feet. The man sighed from his prison as he watched over the earth, he knew of an upcoming threat to his planet, but there was no way to escape. The young man believed there wouldn't be another threat to the planet, hell there hadn't been for over three centuries, but now when the world needed a hero the most, he couldn't save it. Stop complaining Brad a deep voice growled within his subconscious. He knew that voice anywhere, it was the only thing that kept him company. It was the Kyubi no Yoko Akakurama, the nine-tailed fox and the greatest biju of his time. I can't help it Karama, ever since those damn Kais sealed me inside the moon, I've been bored as fuck Naruto told his partner, he remember all those centuries ago when the Kais asked for his help against a threat to the universe. Ajin Byu was the creature's name, and Dam was the bastard tough. He had to use his full-tailed beast mode against Byu, but the pink demon took his attacks on and came back for more. It was only thanks to his Mokuten and sealing abilities that he was able to defeat the monster. He sealed Majin Buu into a wooden and stone prison of his own that not even his master Babidi could break. After that, the Kais began to teach Naruto how to separate his chakra and begin to use Kai abilities. Thanks to his shadow clones, learning how to use Kai didn't take that long. His progress started to scare the Kais, so they thought it would be for the best interest of the universe if he was sealed away as well. Flashback. Naruto let out a grateful burp as he finally downed his last bowl of ramen. He couldn't believe how well the day had went, he had finished his Kai training, and now the Kais had invited him over for Raymond to celebrate. Naruto walked outside and seen the Kais watching over Majin Buu's prison with cautious glances, and the blonde Jinchuriki couldn't help but sigh. I swear those guys are so paranoid Naruto muttered while hearing his partner Kurama agree from within his mind. Naruto made his way over to the Kais. Hey guys Naruto called out. Immediately the Kais snapped their attention towards Naruto and let out a smile. Naruto felt something was wrong with the smiles plastered on the Kai's faces, but he didn't think much of it. You Kai's need to stop worrying so much, I sealed him good, and he will not be getting out for a long time, Naruto said, while putting emphasis on the word long, he tapped his fist against the prison of Majin Buu, and it made a hollow knocking sound. I think you're right Naruto the youngest of the Kai's Akashin said with a smile. Anyways Naruto, me and the other Kai's have been thinking something over, and we've come to a decision the other Kai's nodded their heads, while Naruto began to grow excited. What have you decided on, teaching me a new technique or Naruto was stopped in his excited rant when Shin raised his hand. No Naruto nothing like that. Naruto ever since you've helped us defeat Buu we've come to realize that you're the strongest being in the universe, Naruto smiled a megawatt fox grin, and a small blush stained his tan cheeks. Me and the others have decided it would be the best if you were sealed away to Naruto's smile immediately dropped, while his sapphire eyes widened in shock. Naruto poked his pinky finger in his ear before digging it around, and then removed it. I'm sorry I don't think I understood what you just said. Repeated his tone that was usually friendly and inviting, had morphed to a cold one that sent chills up and down the Kai's spines. Naruto, we can't be more grateful to you for what you've not only done for us, but for the universe. But we the Kai's have decided that a being of your power shouldn't run around freely where others could influence him so easily, Shin explained, while Naruto's anger began to spike, his fist clenched roughly, and his teeth gritted. You ungrateful bastards, you think I will willingly go along with this? Naruto shouted while a blue aura flame encircled his body, and his blue eyes shifted to a crimson red with three tomo surrounding the iris. His eyes were now a full Sharingan which he had acquired after defeating Madara Cheha during the Fourth Great Shinobi War. Shin seemed to sigh, and a frown graced his purple face. I was afraid you would react this way Shin snapped his fingers, and a jolt ran through Naruto's body. His power vanished and his eyes had returned to normal. He fell flat on his face, and he found out he couldn't move any of his limbs. You teams what have you done to me Naruto demanded trying to find aces to anything that would help him move and rip these Kais a new asshole. We had put a little something special in that Raymond of yours. 
On this planet, there's a plant that only grows during the summertime, and it's used to help us Kai's sleep. It will relax the muscles, and then your eyes will begin to grow heavy. Then finally you'll fall into a nice slumber as he spoke, Naruto could feel the symptoms taking effect. You monsters not only are you betraying me, but you went as low as to mess with my most valuable food, Raymond. You Kai's are a bunch of Sulis backstabbing bastards, Naruto said his eyes growing even heavier, and he began to wonder why Kurama wasn't cleaning the effects of the plant from his system. I bet you're wondering why the fox isn't helping you. We knew of your Raymond addiction Naruto, and since you consumed so much Raymond with the ingredients of the plant inside, the fox seemed to have suffered from the effects as well, Shin explained, while Naruto's vision was growing dark. Am you all Naruto muttered one last time before falling into unconsciousness. When Naruto had reawakened, he was watching high above the earth in his new stone containment. He was very thankful that he had resealed the Jiubi into the Jito statue, and not the moon or else he would be fighting it, and that was definitely something he didn't want to do, ever again. Hell even imagined Byu didn't come close to giving him as much fright as when he faced the Jiubi during the war. Hey Gaki, do you feel that right now? It's coming from Earth Kurama said while Naruto snapped his focus down onto the planet below, and he could barely see a giant hairy ape-like creature starting a rampage. Wow that thing feels to be as strong as the three tails Naruto said, while wondering what kind of creature could possess enough power to rival a Bijuu in battle. There seems to be another power near that giant ape, not as powerful to where it would give us a challenge. But it's stronger than anything we've felt on earth in a while since Son Goku died, Kurama stated while Naruto nodded in agreement. He had seen many battles from above, but only one individual caught his attention the most, and he really wanted to test his skill against him, and that was Son Goku. Naruto honestly thought the earth was safe with Goku always watching over it in his absence, but ever since his life force vanished six months ago, Naruto felt the earth was going to be in deep trouble unless he escaped from his tomb. Him guessing that other power would be that Piccolo fellow Goku teamed up with months ago to fight Raditz. Him also willing to bet that giant ape creature might be Goku's Gaki Naruto said while tapping his chin in thought. Naruto glazed down and watched the battle from above. Piccolo dodged a giant hairy fist from the newly transformed son Gohan. Piccolo and his rivals Brad had been training for months to fight the Saiyans, and tonight was the full moon. He had been completely caught off guard when Gohan had metamorphed into this giant fucking gorilla, and it seemed he wasn't in control of his actions. The great ape opened its mouth, showing teeth as big as city buses and as sharp as a katana. Purple Kai energy gathered from within the ape's throat before unleashing a powerful Kai blast. The blast easily toppled mountains as if they were dominoes and continued on before detonating off in the distance. The blast lighted up the night with a bright purplish and pink glow. Tunks of broken earth and mountain were sent flying. Piccolo had to shield himself as debris from the explosions headed his way. He could hear the beast continue to shoot off Kai blast after blast, and each time it was more destructive than the last. I don't understand, how could this be happening Piccolo shouted from above, watching as the transformed Gohan pounded his hairy chest in some form of victory. If I don't find a way to stop this monster, there won't be an earth left to defend Piccolo said, while the ape's crimson gaze drifted towards him before firing off another Kai blast. Piccolo barely dodged the beam of energy. Piccolo even though he wouldn't allow his pride to admit it was intimidated by this creature Goku's child had become. I need to change him back suddenly an idea hit the green's kind warrior. Turning around, he came face to face with the full moon and all its glory. Piccolo remembered the conversation Raditz had with Goku about the moon and how it was their key to transforming. That's it a grin stretched across Piccolo's face before gathering Kai into his palms. Lightning sparked in his hands before cocking back his arm and threw it forward as fast as he could. A Kai blast sailed from his palms and accented towards the moon. The blast easily escaped the atmosphere and was heading towards a certain blonde stony prison. Should should both Naruto and Kurama said as the blast from Piccolo was heading towards them fast. This is going to hurt the son of Minato and Kishina thought, and his partner mentally agreed with him. The blast had made contact with the moon. Naruto felt pain surge up and down his system as he faintly noticed he was falling and chunks of rock were following after him. Naruto Uzumaki Namakas, successor of the Rakuto Senen, Toad Sage of Mount Mayaboku, Rakudame Hokage and third Jinchuriki of the Kaiubi no Yoko, had finally been released from the moon and was making his return to the earth, it was going to be a long and painful ride. Piccolo watched as Gohan had reverted back to his regular form and was passed out on the ground. Piccolo had noticed the destruction Gohan caused in that form and mentally shivered at the possibilities of what the other two Saiyans could do if they had transformed. Reaching down, Piccolo plucked Gohan's tail off before using his powers to materialize an orange guy onto Gohan's naked body. The outfit could have been an exact replica of Goku's, but it had his kanji instead of the turtle one. Next to Gohan's unconscious form was a small sword that was sheathed. 
This will show others that you were my student Piccolo said, his eyes never leaving the unconscious child. I've done more than I intended for you kid, but now it's time for my own training without another word, Piccolo shot off into the night, missing an object that closely resembled a person falling from the sky. Naruto groaned as he opened his eyes only to close them as the sun's harsh light glared onto his face. The blonde slowly rose up and ignored the aching in his muscles that were telling him to stop moving. Am Piccolo, I don't know if I should be thanking him for freeing me or kicking his ass around the world and back Naruto muttered while looking out towards the landscape before him. He seemed to be in the same mountains that Piccolo had been training Gohan in. Naruto caught the sight of a mountain with a strange shape in it that kind of looked like the outline of his body. Now I know what Sakura-chan and the others meant when they said I was hard-headed Naruto chuckled before trying to get in contact with Kurama. Hey Kurama, you awake buddy? Am Kit, that was some ride. If it wasn't for me you would have died or at least been in a coma, Kurama said, while Naruto gave his partner a mental thanks. Hey you just remember though Kurama, if I die then you go with me he responded back with a smirk while hearing his partner give him a growl in annoyance. Shut up brat. So Kurama, now that I am free from the moon, what should I do now? I mean the Saiyans won't be here for another few months. Naruto asked. Inside his mind, the great Kurama tapped his furry chin and thought before a smile rested on his face. I've got an idea, how about you help train Goku's Gaki for about a month, and then we go get some training of our own done. Besides we need to help master your Sharingan, then your eternal Manjiku Sharingan. You might have acquired both from Madara team, but it doesn't mean you know how to use them after all, Naruto mentally agreed with his partner. Naruto began to use his sensing abilities to find Gohan's life energy. It didn't take long to locate the son of Goku's energy level. Naruto summoned his Kai energy before blasting off into the atmosphere and heading straight for Gohan. Son Gohan didn't know how he got himself into these kind of situations. He just wanted to do what his mother told him by studying and getting good grades, so one day he could become a scholar. But it seemed fate always had to take some kind of action when it came to his life. First it was his father being killed by his jerk of an uncle. Then it was being kidnapped by his father's old enemy, Piccolo, who thought it would be a great idea to leave him in the wilderness by himself. Now he was running for his life away from a really hungry T-Rex. Gohan turned around to see the dinosaur's mouth was opened and aimed to swallow him in one bite. The beast's jaws dripped with saliva that made Gohan shiver in fright before trying to increase his pace. The child's young heart beat faster than a bass drum, trying to pump more blood through his body and give Gohan more energy, but his muscles were burning due to the constant running. Then, Gohan suddenly felt the ground leave him as he tripped over a rock and landed face first on the ground. He skidded for a few inches before coming to a complete stop. Ouch Gohan muttered before he felt something wet drip onto his forehead. Gohan dared to look up and seen the mouth of the T-Rex descending above him, ready to finally finish him off and turn the young child into food. Feeling panic rush through his system, he turned away and awaited the feeling of death's cold and cruel embrace. Gohan waited and waited. Then he waited some more, but he didn't feel the dinosaur's jaws clamp around him or anything, he felt nothing. Turning his head slightly, Gohan risked a peek and boy did he get an eyeful. The Zonic's eyes widened in shock as a hand was planted against the T-Rex's forehead, which seemed to keep the beast in place, and it seemed no matter how much the T-Rex struggled, it couldn't move. Well aren't you a big guy huh? A voice questioned, Gohan followed the hand up towards the arm until he finally noticed his savior. The man before him had spiky hair with a color of yellow that could only be matched by the beauty of the sun. Three whisker marks lined each cheek. He was wearing the strangest outfit Gohan had ever seen, except for Raditz's of course. The man seemed to wear a green jacket underneath a crimson cloak with black flames touching the bottom. Dark colored pants and a set of boots. I know how hungry you must be T-Rex, but that doesn't mean you can go around and eat children, what's wrong with you? Naruto scolded the beast while releasing the T-Rex's forehead. The dinosaur stumbled back before roaring at Naruto and opened its massive jaws, hoping to swallow the blonde hole. Gohan was worried that his savior might get eaten, but was surprised as he simply vanished before the dinosaur could eat him. Now that's just rude Naruto said reappearing above the cranium of the T-Rex and lashing out with a brutal kick to the back of the skull. Gohan cringed as he could hear the shockwave of the strike. The dinosaur stood still for a moment before it fell onto the ground, a sleeper dead, Gohan didn't know which. Hey there kid you okay Gohan quickly turned around and came face to face with his savior. Yeah I'm fine Gohan couldn't help but feel a little uneasiness towards this strange man, he expelled an aura of kindness, but it had an underlayer which demanded respect. Good, would hate to see anything bad happen to Goku's Gaki after all the man smiled. Gohan was surprised that this man knew he was Goku's child, but the young Demi Saiyan had never met this stranger before him. How do you know who I am and who my father is Gohan asked, his childlike curiosity getting the better of him. The man seemed to smile at the question. 
me and your dad have never met in person kid, but let's just say I've been watching over your family for a while now. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikas, it's very nice to meet you son of Goku Naruto smiled while extending his hand towards the child who looked at the outstretched limb strangely. His mother Kaikai Kai had taught him not to talk to strangers, but this man now known as Naruto really didn't seem to want to harm him, so he shook his hand. Nice to meet you Naruto, my name is Son Gohinti son of Goku, smiled his inherited son smile, which was only matched by Naruto's foxy grin. So Gohin since you know I've watched your family for a while and now I've got to ask why don't you enjoy fighting like your father? Naruto already knew the answer, but he hoped to find a way to use Gohin's answer as a way to convince the little half Saiyan to train with him. He watched as Gohin clenched his fists in what appeared to be anger. I actually enjoy watching my dad fight, but I don't know how to fight. My mom always has me studying to be a scholar and I enjoy it, but I want to fight as well. But my mom would be furious with me if I told her that and would probably take away my dinner Gohin side at the end, well Naruto couldn't help but feel sympathy for the kid. Well since your mom isn't here right now, how about I teach you how to fight, would you like that? Naruto asked. Well Piccolo is supposed to be training me, Gohin said innocently, remembering how the green-skinned warrior promised to help him prepare to fight the Saiyans. Well since Piccolo isn't here right now I could train you. And when that old green bean decides to return, you'll be strong enough to actually surprise him in a fight. When he does come back though, you will continue training with him, Naruto said while Gohin began to smile. Yeah I would like that Gohin's smile suddenly became a frown. But after he comes back, does that mean I will never see you again? Naruto laughed at the question before he began to shake his head. Don't worry kid, I think you'll be seeing a lot more of me over the next few months. Now enough talking your training begins now. Without another word, Naruto quickly dashed at Gohin with his fist cocked back. A month later. The sun began to rise up over the mountain cliffs, adding the colors of bright orange, pink and yellow to the already blue sky. Small puffy white clouds drifted overhead as the sun continued to climb its way higher and higher over the earth. Down below, a tall male figure and a small child could be seen battling it out in rapid combinations of punches, kicks, blocks and energy blasts. Hell the child figure was slicing away at the taller figure with a sword. Naruto mentally cursed himself, he just had to teach Gohin some of his kenjutsu skills, and now here he was, trying not to have his head cleaved from his shoulders. Ducking under another slice, Naruto vanished in a burst of speed which surprised the younger Saiyan. Gohin suddenly became aware that a cold steel was pressing against his throat and turned his head slightly to see his sensei and older brother figure Naruto smiling at him. Nice job Gohin, you have really improved greatly since we first started your training, Gohin smiled at the praise he received before a glint appeared in his onyx eyes. I'm not done yet, Naruto Gohin thrusted his elbow into Naruto's gut which surprised the blonde shinobi. Gohin quickly spun around before following up his assault with a punch to the nose. Naruto stumbled back before clutching his nose in pain. Amgaki is a lot smarter than I give him credit for Naruto muttered before his sixth sense went alive with danger. Naruto looked up to see Gohin flying towards him with the speed of a missile. The boy's foot was aimed to cave the blonde's face in. Fuck Naruto thought before Gohin's foot impacted against Naruto and the ground beneath them exploded due to the massive pressure of the attack. Moments later Gohin stumbled out of the crater while panting heavily, sweat fell from his face like a small stream. Gohin thought he had finally got the upper hand on Naruto before a poof sound was heard from the crater and a new white smoke emerged. Suddenly a clapping noise echoed through the rocky wasteland. Nice job Gohin, you defeated one of my cage bunch and Gohin turned to see Naruto was the one applauding and it seemed he didn't have a scratch on him. Gohin couldn't keep the shock off his face, Naruto was completely unharmed. How did you do that Naruto and what is a cage bunch? Gohin asked while he put his sword back in its sheath. Well a cage bunch is the shadow clone technique Naruto crossed his fingers before a poof materialized next to him. As the smoke began to die down an exact replica of Naruto stood next to the original. This is the technique I used which just saved my ass from being turned into paste. It was also thanks to the Kawarimi Jutsu which replaced me with my clone Naruto explained while well, Gohin nodded. So how many of those clone things can you make? Over a thousand Gohin's eyes widened at the answer and was shocked to hear that Naruto said it like being a one-man army was just an average thing. Naruto dismissed his clone before he felt Piccolo's Kai flash across his senses. Well Gohin it seems my time training you is up and the rest will be up to Piccolo. Now don't tell him about me because I want it to be a surprise when I meet him, Naruto said before turning his back on the young Saiyan. Naruto wait. Gohin yelled, catching the blonde's attention immediately. The child's voice seemed to be filled with sadness. Turning around, a wave of guilt spread through his being as he seen Gohin begin to tear up a bit. When will I see you again? Naruto smiled, he honestly couldn't believe how much he must have grown on the son of Goku if he was getting this upset over his departure. 
Walking forward, he placed his hand on Gohin's head and ruffled his hair. When the Saiyans invade Earth is the day we will meet again Son Gohin. Until then train as hard as you can and always protect those who are precious to you without another word, Naruto Uzumaki shot off into the sky and into the sunrise, leaving behind a sad but determined Gohin. Naruto felt the morning air spread through his hair as he drifted through the sky, going at speeds most jet planes would be jealous of. Hey Kurama, it's time to start training with the Sharingan now. I'm sure you probably know more about it than I do anyways Naruto contacted his partner. Yes, those damned eyes have caused me and the other Biju a lot of problems in the past, but you already know that. It's time for our training to begin now channeling chakra into his eyes, they morphed into a fully developed Sharingan. Naruto smirked as his vision instantly became more clear. Yes it's time to show this world the return of Naruto Uzumaki Namikas. Flashback dream. Smoke drifted high over a worn battlefield. Corpses of fallen shinobi were everywhere. Blood painted the landscape with a fresh coat of crimson color. The earth had been torn apart left and right due to the constant fighting with high-level attacks and multiple explosives. The sun had long ago been blocked out by black storm clouds that would sometimes rain bolts of light ironing down from the heavens and tear apart the world just a little bit more. Right now, this is what the final battlegrounds for the fourth shinobi world war looked like to a small group of people and a few gigantic beasts. On one side, there was a beast as big as the mountains that surrounded them. It had a humanoid shape, but it was anything but human. Ten black tails waved behind it, while one singular eye gazed out to its enemies. The eye was red with multiple rings surrounding the pupil and multiple tomos in each ring. This being was the Juubi, the original Biju and known to others as the Ten Tails. If one looked close, they would see two figures standing on its head. These two were Bito and Madara Echeha. The ones who started the fourth shinobi world war and were the reason for the Juubi's revival. Abito looked upon his foes with his Manjiku Sharingan in one eye, while the legendary Rinnegan was in the other. The original Ichiha clan head had the Rinnegan in both eyes. Right now they were so close to achieving their goals of putting the world under a massive Jinjutsu and bring about a false sense of peace. The only thing actually putting a stop to their plans were a group of shinobi that stood before them. One figure was covered in a golden light which took on the form of a giant fox, with nine tails swinging behind it. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze stood before everyone in his full-tailed beast form, his crimson eyes held the will of fire which burned brightly. He was wearing the same necklace that the Rakuto Senen was said to have worn himself centuries ago. Naruto's uniform was a cloak that looked almost like his father's, except it had the kanji for Rakudame Hokage glowing on the back. Next to Naruto stood another figure that was covered in a column of dark violet charka that took the shape of a warrior. The chakra warrior was dressed in a frightening armor that hid in its piercing yellow eyes in a veil of darkness. The figure was Sasuke Chiha, best friend of Naruto, and was using the eternal Manjiku Sharingan's best defensive technique, Susanoo. Sasuke Susanoo held a sword that was blazing with the black flames of Amaterasu. Right by Sasuke was one of the founders of Kanahagakure, Hashirama Senju, who had been revived to give Sasuke answers to some personal questions and now was here fighting to save the elemental nations. Dressed in his crimson battle armor, his own sage mode was activated. A massive sword as big as any next to Hashirama was his brother Tabarama Senju, the Nidame Hokage. His undead eyes glared heavily at the form of Madara Echeha. What he had against the Echeha clan head may be never known to anyone except the two. Here is Insuratobi, third Hokage of Kanoha stood next to his senseis dressed for battle. The final Hokage of the group was the Yandame, Minato Namikaze and father of Naruto. His blonde hair danced in the wind as a small breeze blew through the battlefield. In his grasp was his a three-pronged kunai that helped him perfect his Horatian Jutsu. It was Bekus of the Horatian that Minato became the Yellow Flash of Kanoha and helped end the Third Great Shinobi War. Now he along with the other Hokages had been resurrected to save the world, hopefully for the final time. Behind them stood their summoner, the Snake San and Arachimaru, who gave out a small pant of exhaustion for keeping the Ido Tensei activated for so long. Suddenly the Juubi gave off a howl, seemingly trying to challenge the fools that stood in its way. From the Juubi's breath alone, winds with the strength of hurricanes ripped through the air, and the shinobi below had to use their chakra to keep them stationed on the ground. Hashirama clasped his hands in what looked to be a prayer before he shouted out his jutsu. Lokuten hijutsu. Jukai Koten trees burst from below and shot forward. They began to wrap around the body of the great Juubi, in which the great beast began to struggle a little as the hole grew tighter and tighter. I don't think so Hashirama Madara said while mimicking the same thing Hashirama had done earlier. Thanks to stealing the cells of the Shadame, Madara's own Mokuten abilities activated and began to battle with Hashirama's own. Naruto and the others decided it was time for them to get in on the action as well. Minato leaped onto the golden column that resembled the Kaiubi no Yoko before the Chakra Beast raced forward. This is the end Madara team. Tabarama declared before going through his own hand seals. 
Suatan. Adama Suryatan no Jutsu a massive dragon, almost as big as the Chakra Kai Ubi formed from the moisture in the air. Its yellow eyes glared down at both Abito and Madara, who didn't seem all that worried. Giving off a roar, the Suatan technique came crashing down on the head of the Juubi, who with a grunt, broke from Hashirama's Mokutan technique. The Juubi gave off another roar as the technique slammed onto its cranium, the roar wasn't of pain, but more of annoyance. Madara had used his own Susanoo skeleton to protect himself, while Libido had used the Manjikyu's Kamui technique to make himself transparent to the attack. Meanwhile as Minato and Naruto was getting closer to the Juubi, they needed a plan. Both knew regular attacks wouldn't really hurt the Juubi, hell the only person that used physical attacks to harm the Ten Tails was the Rakuto Senen, but sadly he wasn't around to help them. Naruto, we need to reseal the Juubi back into the Jito statue, Naruto's eyes widened before they locked with his father's. How though, I thought the statue was destroyed due to the Juubi being resurrected, Minato shook his head. No Naruto, you see the Jito statue is like the birth of a butterfly. The Jito statue is the cocoon for the Bijuu's chakra, and the Juubi is the catapular that awaits inside, as all the chakra mixes together. Right now the Juubi has in a sense shedded its cocoon. Right now we need a way to resummon the Jito statue and use it to split the Juubi's chakra, before resealing it Minato said in which Naruto nodded, it made sense after all. That's going to be a problem dad, the only way to summon the Jito statue is if you have the Rinnegan, and right now none of us have it, Naruto said. Minato gave off a small bitter smile, while his undead eyes drifted up on the Juubi's head and seen the figure of Abito Uchiha, a person he was proud at one time to say was his student. I wouldn't be too sure Naruto. End of dream flashback. Naruto awakened from his sleep with a jerk as sweat dripped down his face. Ever since he's been freed from the moon, Naruto's been having dreams or flashbacks of what happened during the final battle of the Fourth Great Shinobi War. Naruto could only guess it was Madara getting some form of revenge from the afterlife for killing him and stopping the infinite Tsukyomi. Or maybe it was the Shinigami making him relive this battle as punishment for living way longer than he should have. Either way, these dreams, nightmares, flashbacks or whatever you wanted to call it kept happening, and they didn't seem to end anytime soon. Getting dressed in his gear, Naruto knew they had about a month or two left before the Saiyans got here. And Naruto would need all the training he can get to brush up on his rusty skills. He found that out yesterday when he was training his Sharingan. It seemed being trapped in the moon for centuries with no way to train would have some effect on your skills. Naruto sent another silent curse to the Supreme Kais above, the blonde Jinchuriki made a vow as soon as Hess finished with the Saiyans, the Supreme Kais were going to be next. Only problem for you Brad is that you have no way to reach the Kais. I suggested back after we defeated Majin Buu to put a Horatian seal up there, but you didn't listen to me, Kurama said with a grin which irritated his container. Naruto well annoyed couldn't help but agree with his partner. He had no way to reach the Kai's world, he didn't even know where in the universe it was. Oh be quiet Kurama, anyways, how should we train my Sharingan today? Create a cage bunch and then have it gather sage chakra. Then once it has entered sage mode. I want you to battle it with your Sharingan activated Naruto gulped at this, from using sage mode in the past, he knew all the abilities that came with it. Including the greatly increased strength, reflexes and what it did to his Rasengan techniques. Naruto repressed a small shudder. Are you crazy Kurama, why would I do that? You know all the things Sage Mode does. How the hell would this help my training with the Sharingan? Kurama chuckled darkly in the back of his mind. With Sage Mode, your cage bunshin will be able to fight longer and it won't be killed with one hit. And besides it will give you more motivation on trying not to get hit and increase your reflex time with the Sharingan, Kurama explained while laughing at the look on his container's face. The two might be fine bringing his fingers into the familiar jutsu seal, he summoned a cage bunshin. Alright clone, you know what to do the clone only gave a two-fingered salute before taking a meditative position on the floor. It only took a few moments before the clone's eyes snapped open, in which they revealed no longer an ocean blue, but yellow with a bar-like pupil. Orange tint surrounded the outside of his eyes. Naruto watched as the clone stood up before entering the same fighting stance he learned when he finished his sage training. Kurama this better help my Sharingan training or so help Kami that there will be hell to pay Naruto muttered, while he could still faintly hear the snickering of his biju. Channeling chakra into his eyes, the original Naruto's eyes morphed into the Sharingan. Without another word, both the clone and the creator charged the other. Piccolo would be considered a liar if he denied that he was impressed with the growth of Gohin's skills over a whole month. Gohin was attacking him with his sword, while being sloppy at some points, and held a few openings in his defense, Piccolo was truly astounded with the way Gohin used the weapon. Avoiding another slash from his pupil, Piccolo fired off beams from his eyes towards his rival's son. Gohin frowned before trying to come up with a possible counter-attack. Over the month, Naruto drilled into his head that strategies could be just as helpful as having the power to blow up a planet. 
Think Gohan, how could I use this to my advantage? A sudden idea flashed across his mind. The young half Saiyan didn't know if this plan would work, but he would give it a shot. Gohan put his arms in an X position as the beams finally connected with him, resulting in a small explosion detonating. A small cloud of dirt, dust, and rock covered Gohan's form as he decided it was time to begin phase one of his plan. Piccolo watched with interest as Gohan was enveloped in the dirt cloud. The cloud of dirt obscured his side of Gohan, which only gave the green warrior an idea that his pupil possibly had a plan in mind. The reason Piccolo believed this is because he knew Gohan could have dodged that attack, but Piccolo caught his gaze, and it seemed to have been racing at high speeds, trying to come up with some plan for a counter-attack. I'm only battling with a little under half my strength, but for Gohan to have improved this much is truly incredible Piccolo thought, while well, his senses immediately went on high alert. Gohan's silver blade came shooting out of the cloud and towards Piccolo at high speeds. But Piccolo simply leaned his head to the side and the sword sailed past him. Ha! A yell echoed through the wasteland as Gohan shot out of the cloud. The air rippled around Gohan's form as he was moving at great speeds towards his other sensei. Not good enough Gohan. Piccolo lashed out with his foot, fully expecting to nail Gohan in the face. To his surprise, Gohan's image simply went through him before vanishing. What an afterimage, when did he learn that? Piccolo's train of thought was cut short as Gohan materialized in front of him before blasting the Namekian in the jaw with a powerful punch. Gohan quickly followed up the attack with a volley of punches and kicks. Before Gohan could deliver another round of attacks, he doubled over in pain as Piccolo's fist buried in his gut. Stumbling back, Gohan tried to catch his breathing, and he missed the toothy smirk Piccolo was giving. Good job Gohan, you used my attack to your own advantage while coming up with a strategy. Then you used the afterimage technique to catch me off guard before going in for the finish, Piccolo praised, while Gohan laughed happily after finally getting the pain to subside. Thanks Mr. Piccolo Gohan said before Piccolo elbowed the half Saiyan across the jaw and then kicked him straight into a mountain. Don't get distracted brat, I'm still your enemy and the training isn't over. Gohan slowly made his way out of the mountain, his orange guy ripped torn to pieces and had a few cuts on his body. But besides that, the son of Goku didn't look like he was in too bad of shape. With a yell, Gohan dashed towards Piccolo and easily closed the gap between them in seconds. This kid is going to be stronger than all of us, I can feel it Piccolo thought before dodging another one of Gohan's attacks. A month later in Otherworld. While son Gohan trained with Piccolo, his father, son Goku was currently training with the guy who watched over the northern galaxy Aka King Kai. Right now Goku was practicing the Kaiken technique which amplified the user's strength, speed and abilities. But the Kaiken had one flaw. When used the Kaiken will immediately put a strain on the person's body, and the higher the user goes, the more strain that will be added. King Kai made it clear to Goku that if pushed too far, the user's body will give out, and you'll possibly die if the Kaiken is activated for too long. Meanwhile King Kai was watching over the planet Earth with what could possibly be described as a guarded expression. It had only been about two or three months after the moon was destroyed and a strange energy signal had appeared. King Kai noticed the strange Kai signature had interacted with Goku's son. The only reason the blue being didn't announce this to Goku was because he didn't sense any evil feelings towards the Earth or the child. But that didn't mean King Kai wasn't prepared if this power suddenly turned hostile. But who or what could it be? Hey King Kai. The cheerful voice of Son Goku broke him out of his thoughts. Yes Goku what is it King Kai asked. The Kai turned to his student who had the classic sun grin plastered on his face. Well so far I've got down the basics of the Kaiken, I was just wondering if there was anything else you could teach me. King Kai could almost see Goku's eyes light up with excitement at the possibility of learning a new technique. King Kai let out a low chuckle. No Goku, there is no more techniques that I can teach you. You've went through all my lessons at an incredible pace. But for right now let's go over what you have learned. Okay Bubbles get moving. Bubbles the monkey immediately followed the Kai's orders and took a place next to Goku. King Kai pulled out a stopwatch. Okay you two, on your mark Goku smiled down at Bubbles. That said Goku tensed his muscles to get ready for a run. Oh. After clicking the stopwatch. Bubbles shot off at incredible speed. But then something that would amaze the Kai's and others for the months to come happened. Goku dashed at speeds that were easily faster than Bubbles' pace and caught the monkey. King Kai's face was one of pure shock as he glanced at his stopwatch. Wow under a second, that's incredible Goku set down Bubbles and watched as the animal made its way back to King Kai. Next Gregory Bubbles then handed Goku the same mullet he used when he first hit Gregory. Oh. Gregory glowed with a blue energy before flying at Goku, hoping to catch the Saiyan off guard. Goku with a determined yet friendly smirk, simply disappeared which shocked Gregory. Materializing behind his opponent, Goku tapped Gregory on the head with the mullet. 1.2 seconds. 
that's astounding Goku King Kai's shock only grew as Goku easily went through his lessons. Hey thanks. Well Goku let's see you do the spirit bomb now. I've been waiting for this Goku clenched his fist in awaited anticipation. He gave off a yell that echoed off the planet's surface, Goku focused on gathering the life energy from the nature around him. He could slowly feel as the plants gave up small bits of their energy before he started to collect the energy into his body. Minutes passed and King Kai felt a drop of sweat drip down from his face as he watched his student prepare the spirit bomb. A bright white energy then surrounded Goku's body. Great job Goku, now that you have the energy, form it into a ball Goku focused the spirit energy into his palm, which took on the form of a sphere. I'm ready King Kai the blue Kai said nothing as he summoned a steel cube and had it float before Goku. Without another word, King Kai threw the cube as hard as he could. The cube sailed past Goku and began to make its way around the planet. Remember Goku to feel it out, not see it. Goku was doing just that, focusing on the cube as it made its way overhead. When it was about to fly past Goku, the Saiyan turned and threw the spirit bomb, making immediate contact with the steel cube which exploded in a shower of dust and sparks. Once again shock was all King Kai felt seeing Goku actually use the spirit bomb. Wow Goku, to be honest, I didn't expect you to use the spirit bomb with that level of skill, I'm impressed King Kai smiled at the end while Goku rubbed the back of his head in the usual sun manner. Thanks King Kai, that means a lot. Well Goku in about one day, the Saiyans will be arriving. Your training is complete and now the rest is up to you. Yeah but before I leave, can I have something to eat Goku asked while his stomach practically roared in agreement. Sure thing Goku the Kai and Bubbles went and started to make the food before Goku's departure. The sun began to set once again over the beauty of the planet Earth. The sky began to turn a dark shade of blue while the sun could still be seen over the horizon as it was giving its final goodbye for the day. Down below, a green figure with a small one slung over his shoulder was walking with a limp. The bruised and beaten Piccolo was carrying an unconscious Gohan over his shoulder. Gohan was beaten and cut in multiple places, but a good night's rest would surely heal the young Demi Saiyan. As the Namekian approached a small stream that glistened with the fading light of the sun, he carefully sat down Gohan and then took a seat himself. Am kid, a month ago I said you were going to be powerful, and it seems I was right. It's only been another month and your power has grown beyond my expectations. And your skills with that sort of grown as well, Piccolo remembered a few times where he had to regenerate a new limb because of his student's sword. Then Piccolo's eyes narrowed in suspicion. That's the problem though. Before I left, I know you had no experience lifting or even swinging that sword, and now you're doing it as if you've had it for a year now. And your growth in power over the month I left you is strange as well. I'm pretty sure you had some help Gohan, the only question is from who. The only response Piccolo got was a slight snoring. Despite the situation, Piccolo let a real smile grace his stoic face. I guess I can ask you tomorrow, Piccolo said before slipping into a meditative trance. Standing on a cliff right above Piccolo and Gohan, the figure of Naruto Uzumaki Namikas could be seen watching the two. His golden hair and crimson cloak gently danced as a small gust of wind blew through. Naruto had been masking his energy so Piccolo couldn't sense him. Naruto had seen the two's final day of training and was truly impressed with the way Gohan had improved. Tomorrow is the big day, Hakurama Naruto muttered, his gaze drifting from the Piccolo and Gohan towards the sky. Yes Naruto and dude my ingenious training idea with your shadow clone, your power and skill have increased to incredible levels. Also it seems you have mastered your Sharingan and a little bit of the eternal Manjikyu Naruto gave a slight nod at his Bijuu's comment. He remembered a month ago when Kurama suggested to use Sage Mode on his shadow clone and fight it. The first two weeks and Naruto left that training session beaten, bruised and cut. Hell it was only thanks to Kurama that Naruto was probably still alive at this point. The Saiyans will learn to never mess with the planet Earth again. My father, all the past Tokages, all the Shinobi and the Rakuto Senen, gave their lives to protect the Earth, and tomorrow I will too Naruto gave one last glance at the sky, before slowly vanishing in a mixture of leaves and wind. Out in space, two spherical pods could be seen flying past the sun and making their way towards the Earth. Inside the pods, both Saiyans were slumbering. The biggest of them with a frown while the smallest one with flame-like coal-colored hair had a cocky smirk. In one more day they would arrive, take the Dragon Balls for themselves. Vegeta would get his wish for immortality before finally taking a stand against Frieza. Then after collecting the seven magical orbs, they would turn the earth to space dust. But the two Saiyans didn't know was that the Z Fighters and Naruto Uzumaki was ready for them. Beast City was alive and well, as the people who inhabited it went about their daily lives. They went to work, out to eat, played with their children, the teens hung out with their friends and so many other social activities. At this very moment, two spherical pods entered the Earth's atmosphere and descended towards East City below. Flames licked at the door of the pods as they were falling from a high altitude and were quickly making their way to the ground. 
Some of the city's occupants noticed the falling objects and stopped to see what was going to happen. The two spheres completely tore through a building, easily reducing the steel structure to rubble. The citizens of East City screamed as the two pods crashed onto the ground. The street beneath the pods collapsed and a huge explosion rocked the city. Cars went flying, windows on buildings shattered to pieces, and small fires began to flare to life. A few minutes passed before the citizens of East City gathered the courage to finally check out what caused so much damage to their city. They noticed two very large craters in the street and what looked to be pods of some sort. The two spherical objects were letting off steam as they were finally cooling down from the intense heat they had gathered when entering Earth. Slowly, the pods opened and two figures stepped out. The citizens watched in fear and in anticipation as they slowly levitated from the craters. So this is Earth the one with black hair commented. The larger of the two glanced around before giving off a snort. Wow the power I'm sensing from these fools are just sad. Yes this is true Nappa, but we haven't come here for them. We came here for the Dragon Balls, so let's get moving already the now named Nappa smirked. Sure thing Vegeta gathering Kai into his fingertips, he lifted them, and the people of East City barely had time to scream before they were vaporized by a huge explosion. Citizens from all ages were reduced to smoldering ash, but the two villains didn't care, they had a mission to complete, and the lives of Earth's people meant nothing to them. Floating above a bigger crater that is now East City, Vegeta glared at his partner. Damn it Nappa, what if a Dragon Ball was in that blasted city, our mission would have been for nothing if you blow even one up, Vegeta growled, while Nappa rubbed the back of his head nervously. He hated to make Vegeta mad, and when the Saiyan Prince got angry, well it wasn't pretty. I'm pretty sure there wasn't a Dragon Ball in that pathetic city Vegeta suddenly both Vegeta and Nappa's scouters turned on. Well what do you know Vegeta, maybe there is more to this planet than we thought Nappa smirked while adrenaline rushed through his veins at the thought of a new challenge. Well why don't we go and greet our new friends, both Saiyans cast one last look at the remains of East City before blasting off. In the wastelands, both Gohan and Piccolo snapped their eyes opened as they felt two powerful Kai signatures slither across their senses. Do you sense that Mr. Piccolo, what monstrous energy Gohan said. You're right Gohan, it seems the Saiyans have finally arrived Piccolo could honestly say he had never felt such tremendous Kai levels before. They made Raditz look like a small child in comparison to power. Be ready for anything Gohan, this is what we trained for after all Gohan nodded. Inwardly, the half Saiyan was happy and frightened at the same time. Frightened at the thought of going head to head with the Saiyans. Happy that he would not only be seeing his father again, but his older brother Naruto. Somewhere in the mountains. Yan and his companion Shiatsus shielded their eyes as a strong gust of wind rammed into them. They had seen the explosion in the direction of where East City was located. No what have they done? Tian shouted while still guarding his face from the winds that were assaulting his face. Somewhere else. Yamcha stood up, dripping wet and apprehensive as he had too sensed the fearsome power of the newly arrived Saiyans. The massive winds from an explosion off in the distance had blown him off his feet and into the shallow pool behind him. They're finally here Yamcha muttered. He was ready to finally put the training he had done with the others and Kami to the test. Sensing out his friend's Kai signatures, Yamcha shot off in the closest one's direction. Another world. Oku raced down Snake Way as fast as he could. It seemed King Kai didn't calculate the time it would take to run down the serpent-shaped road and the arrival of the Saiyans. Goku was surrounded by a shroud of Kai as he used his energy to make himself move faster. Then Goku felt two great powers fly across his own senses. Wow that must be the Saiyans. Their power is so incredible I can feel it from here. Goku thought in amazement before a true smile graced his features. Goku couldn't understand why the thought of such a challenge brought him this much joy, but he wasn't complaining. Now another problem grabbed Goku's attention, he wondered how strong his friends and son must have gotten. Goku didn't know if they were a match for the Saiyans, but he only hoped they slowed them down so he could arrive and help even out the battlefield. Without another word or thought, the son of Bardock did his best to try and make himself move faster down Snake Way. Hey Piccolo. A voice shouted, both Gohan and Piccolo looked up to see a bald midget flying towards them. Without making a sound, Krillin landed on the ground. What are you doing here, not to fight I hope Piccolo joked asked with a grin that revealed abnormally large fangs. Hey don't talk like that, I've improved and now I'm here to help Krillin smiled before turning his attention to his best friend son. And look at you Gohan, you've grown up a lot since I last seen you and your power has increased so much. Yeah, Mr. Piccolo's training has been really tough and if I wanted to stand any chance against the Saiyans I needed to get stronger. I guess my body just kinda changed along with everything else, Gohan smiled his inherited son grin while doing his best to not mention Naruto training him. Piccolo narrowed his eyes slightly, with the arrival of the Saiyans, he hadn't been too focused on asking about how Gohan had gotten so strong before he even trained him. Piccolo then suddenly turned his gaze upwards towards the sky. 
Enough of your talking, the Saiyans have arrived Gohan and Krillin followed his gaze and looked up to see two figures hovering above them. Well Nappa it looks like they have been expecting us Vegeta chuckled while hearing a snort of agreement come from his partner. Yeah we have three tough guys here it seems both descended onto the ground. You've got that right Piccolo never lost his smirk. But I have to know, why have you two come to earth? After seeing the way Saiyans are I highly doubt it's to avenge Raditz. Ah so you're that voice I heard Vegeta said. Voice. Yes this device on my face doesn't just read power levels, but also acts as a communicator Vegeta tapped the scouter on his face. Nappa suddenly recognized Piccolo. Now I see why Raditz was defeated, he's a Namekian Vegeta Nappa said. Namekian, what are they talking about? Piccolo thought shocked with the revealing of this information. Piccolo honestly thought he was just the reincarnation of his father, the Demon King Piccolo, but it seemed the two Saiyans knew something he didn't. In addition to having great strength in battle, I've heard Namekians also have rather remarkable abilities as well, Vegeta chuckled before pointing at Piccolo. They can also perform magic-like abilities, so I'm guessing it was you who created the Dragon Balls. Wait, how do they know about the Dragon Balls? Krillin shouted in shock and awe. Krillin guessed if the two Saiyans knew about the Dragon Balls, then they also knew what they were used for. Nappa never lost his own vicious smirk. Coming here for the Dragon Balls is our first objective, hand them over or you'll all die, Piccolo chuckled at the threat like it was an everyday joke. Coming here to Earth was the biggest mistake you two could have made, and now it's time to pay for it Piccolo slipped into his battle stance while Nappa tapped his scouter. After getting a reading on their strength, the Saiyan felt really insulted due to Piccolo's threat. But those puny power levels of yours, good luck with that Nappa commented. Hey Nappa, do we still have some Cybermen left? Wow Vegeta, you sure know how to have a good time Nappa pulled 8 beans from his belt. 8 in total Vegeta and I'm sure this soil will grow them quite nicely, Nappa used his index finger and made 8 holes before put the beans in and covered them up. What are they doing Krillin asked, confused by the strange actions. He was pretty sure they weren't trying to grow a garden of all things. I don't know but be ready for anything Piccolo said, never dropping his battle stance. Within moments, the ground beneath the 8 holes split open and 8 green humanoid figures arose from the ground. The Cybermen flexed and stretched their muscles before turning their attention towards the Z fighters. Without another word, the Cybermen surrounded them. These things are nasty Gohan commented while the son of Goku was internally wondering where Naruto was. Cybermen, these three are your targets. Do them as much harm as you wish Vegeta commanded. Without another word, the Cybermen vanished and the action was mimicked by Gohan, Piccolo and Krillin. Multiple black specks danced around the battlefield while Nappa and Vegeta easily tracked the movements. Gohan was doing the best he could to dodge his opponents. But having to fight four of them at the same time was definitely a challenge. He had no time to prepare a counter-attack or even pull out his sword. So for the moment, Gohan was stuck blocking and throwing back attacks as best as a person fighting four people could. Piccolo wasn't having as much trouble as Gohan had, but the Namekian would lie if he said fighting against the Cybermen would be easy. Piccolo knew he had more power, strength and speed than the smaller aliens. But due to their height and speed, it made hitting the target more difficult. Piccolo easily towered over the Cybermen, so even though he was more powerful, he was having a hard time catching his opponents who used their attributes to their fullest extent. Out of the three, Krillin was probably having it easier than Gohan and Piccolo. Krillin was short and it to match the Cybermen in height, so he didn't have that disadvantage against him. Krillin ducked under a punch from one of his Cybermen foes before lashing out with a kick that knocked the Cybermen away. Turning around, Krillin caught the other Cybermen's fist. Giving off a smirk of his own, Krillin swung the Cybermen around before releasing the green alien towards Gohan. Gohan watched as a Cyberman came flying from the direction where Krillin had been fighting. The airborne Cyberman crashed into the Cyberman behind Gohan. The Demi Saiyan noticed his foes were distracted due to seeing their flying comrade, quickly did a couple of handsprings back to not only create distance, but to finally pull out his sword. Thanks Krillin Gohan called out before hearing a shout come from Piccolo. Gohan turned and seen the ground beneath Piccolo explode open as he flexed his power and created a shockwave strong in it to repel his opponents. Piccolo leaped over besides Gohan and was joined by Krillin moments after. All three watched as the Cybermen regrouped and the Saiyans hadn't moved an inch from their positions. Hey Krillin, Piccolo. A voice cried out from above. Everyone watched as two figures joined them on the battlefield. Tian and Jiaotsu's Krillin happily said. Tian and Jiaotsu gave the smaller fighter a nod before glancing at their opponents. I thought we were only going to be fighting two Saiyans Tian asked. These are Cybermen, it seems they're little monsters created by the Saiyans to fight with us Piccolo, was the one that answered. Tian turned his three-eyed gaze towards Gohan. Is that Goku's kid? Yeah, his name is Gohan Krillin said. Hey guys don't count me out of this fight Yamcha said, finally arriving on the scene. 
Gohin watched as the Krillin and Piccolo discussed something with them before looking around. Gohin looked for a few seconds, hoping to find any possible clue that would tell him Naruto had shown up. Did he lie to me, was he never going to show up to begin with? Were the thoughts running through Gohin's mind as a small wave of sadness hit him at the possibility that his supposed brother figure lied to him. So it seems we have two more players in this little game of ours, Vegeta said, while Piccolo growled. This isn't a game and enough talking. It's time to restart the fighting. Piccolo shouted. Hey where's the harm is this little game Piccolo, and besides it will buy some time until Goku shows up Krillin whispered to the Namekian. The rest seemed to agree with Krillin's plan. Okay then I will go first Yan said while walking forward. Vegeta glanced at the Cyberman. You go first and hammer this fool until he's a bloody mess the Cyberman nodded before rushing Tien. Tien only smiled, he was finally ready to put his training to the test. Underneath West City. In the depths underneath West City were the ruins of the once great village of Kanahagakur. Kanoha was once a beautiful village filled with occupants of all kinds including merchants, civilians and shinobi. Now it lay destroyed, old and torn down, as time has aged the once great village hidden in the leaves into a shell of its former self. Two centuries after the shinobi era had ended, a massive earthquake tore through the village and the ground beneath it collapsed. Kanoha and even the Hokage Monument fell underground and no one was around to watch as the village was slowly buried. Due to time and the advancement of technology, West City was built over Kanoha's ruins and the people of West City had cut down the forest surrounding Kanoha to use for lumber or to build their houses. Naruto carefully leaped from building to building, hoping not to destroy any possible remains of his home village. His blue eyes were filled with tears as a collection of personal memories flashed through his mind. Memories of when he was eating ramen at Ichiraku's, when he finally met Kakashi Sensei after joining Team 7. The battle when Suna and the Sound Village tried to invade Kanoha. Naruto also caught the broken remains of not only his face, but his father's and the other Hokages on the monument that used to stand so proudly over his village. Leaping off a building, he landed in a park. The slides and swings had long ago rusted and it seemed with the slightest touch would break. He had played in this park many times when he was younger, but it was also the place that had his most sacred memory. Flashback. It was two years after the Fourth Great Shinobi War and the village of Kanahagakur had finally been rebuilt from Pain's invasion. Right now, life had been going so greatly in Kanoha and everywhere else in the elemental nations. The other cages have kept the Shinobi Alliance going and everyone knew it was a great step towards true peace. Kanoha had found out Tsunade had passed on due to the wounds she had suffered from fighting Madara Cheha. Naruto was hit the hardest with this information and went into a depression. Hinata was the one who came to check up on the blonde Jinchiriki. Naruto was truly touched when she came and comforted him. He still had feelings for Sakura, but they were now more brother and sister kind of feelings. Hinata helped Naruto come out of his depression, and the two started to get to know the other better. Naruto knew he never talked about her confession, but he wanted to make sure if he had true feelings for Hinata. A week later, Naruto was announced as Rakudame Hokage. Naruto was so excited that he finally achieved his dream of being Hokage. Later that night, he had asked Hinata to join him at the Hokage Monument where the Hyuga Princess congratulated Naruto. It was also at that time, Naruto had not only asked out Hinata, but given her a rather passionate kiss as well. Two years later now, we find the couple strolling through the park, hand in hand. The sun was beginning to set and it cast a beautiful glow over the village. Naruto used his cage bunchens to do his paperwork, so he had all the free time in the world. He also wanted to be there in person for what he was about to do. It's beautiful isn't it Hinata said with a smile. Yes it is Hinata-chan, but even the sun's beauty can't compare to yours Naruto said, while his girlfriend blushed and smiled at the comment. She gave him a quick peck on the cheek. The two found a bench and sat down before they turned and watched as the sun finally descended past the horizon and the moon came out to shine over the darkened village. Hinata-chan, I got you a present Naruto said out of nowhere. The two had been sitting in silence for the past hour and just enjoyed the other's presence and now Naruto suddenly has a gift. Naruto pulled out a small black box and sat it in Hinata's palms. What is it? Hinata asked. Just open it up and say yes Hinata was confused the last part but did as he said. She opened the small box and immediately burst into tears. In the box sat a ring with a giant green gem on it. Hinata now understood what he wanted, she just couldn't believe it was happening. So Hinata-chan, what do you say she broke out of her thoughts to see Naruto had gotten onto one knee. Would you marry me, Hinata Hayuga Naruto asked before getting a bone-crushing hug from his girlfriend. Yes, yes, yes Hinata screamed in pure joy. Months later the two got married and later that night finally sealed their love for each other. Naruto broke from his flashback and felt the tears as they streamed down his whiskered cheeks. He cleaned his face with his sleeve before once again cursing the Kais. 
He had spent his entire life with Hinata, and the two had three beautiful children. A boy named Minato and two girls named Kishina and Tsunade. He remembered watching them grow to be powerful warriors. Naruto had spent his whole life with Hinata, and his heart broke when she passed on before him. When Naruto thought he was finally going to pass on, the Kais finally decided they needed him. Before he left, he appointed Konohimaru as Nanadame Hokage. Naruto secretly hoped that after he was finished with Byu, he could finally die, but it seemed the oldest and most powerful of the Kais gave Naruto some of his life force. Naruto's age had reverted back to about 17. When the Kais told him, he was pissed, but when they mentioned training him to separate his chakra to use Kai, he calmed down. And then their betrayal happened. Naruto left the park before making his way towards the Hokage Tower. He broke through one of the Hokage's office windows and almost chuckled. He remembered how irritated his grandpa figure, here is in Saratobi would get when a shinobi would come in through the windows, instead of using the door. Shaking his head, he walked to the picture of his father that was smiling. He lifted the portrait and seen a hallowed part of the wall behind it. Naruto pricked his index finger and smeared blood over the hallowed wall. Multiple black markings spread onto the wall before they disappeared. A door suddenly opened up to reveal a room that was about the size of a broom closet. Inside lay two swords. One sword was the Nidame Hokage's Shinkan no Ryu, and the second was his mother's blade she had used when she was a shinobi. Kishina had apparently nicknamed her sword Crimson Death. That old mom Naruto muttered with a small smile. Suddenly Naruto felt Gohins, Piccolo's and a few other fighters' powers flare. But he sensed two other negative and incredible energy signatures. So it seems the Saiyans have arrived, and I must not have noticed due to my little trip down memory lane. Looks like the fighting is about to begin, I don't want to miss it, Naruto sealed up the wall once again before leaping out the window. You ready Kurama Naruto shouted. He usually talked to Kurama through their mental link, since he didn't want to look like a nutcase, if anyone else seen him talking to himself. But since no one was alive in Konoha anymore and he checked. He had no reason not to talk out loud to his partner. Sure thing brat, let's go fry us some Saiyans Naruto couldn't see Kurama was grinning from pointed ear to pointed ear. The Biju had been bored over the centuries since they had no one to fight against. Kurama was more than ready to face the supposed all-powerful Saiyans. Summoning his Kai, Naruto began to fly towards the entrance that he used to enter the depths of West City. Otherworld. Goku was now flying as fast as he could, he had been moving at great speeds for hours now, and he was sure he was no closer to reaching the end of the road. Don't worry guys, I'm coming Goku said, almost tempted to use the Kaiken to increase his speed. But King Kai had strictly told him not to use it until he was fighting the Saiyans. King Kai wanted Goku to save up as much energy as possible if he wanted to stand any chance against these alien invaders. Land of the Supreme Kais. So what are you going to do now Supreme Kai has escaped. Shin turned his attention towards Kibito. Sadly we can't do nothing right now, has stronger than us even back then when he couldn't use Kai abilities and he has only been getting stronger, Shin sighed, while Kibito simply kept his stoic face. I'm going to get you Mr. Supreme Kai. A female Kai shouted. Shin now smiled as he jumped up and avoided West Kai. Shin might not have been happy that Naruto escaped and he was pretty sure the blonde Jinchuriki will kill them the first chance he gets. But he knew Naruto wouldn't kill an innocent Kai and there wasn't a Kai as innocent as the Western Kai. When Naruto was sealed, Western Kai was too young to have taken part in the sealing. The other Kais Naruto wouldn't kill would probably be King Kai and Grand Kai. King Kai came later on after Naruto had been sealed and Grand Kai wanted no part in his sealing. Shin watched and almost laughed as Western Kai pouted. He hoped their actions wouldn't affect Naruto's judgment on her. He knew in his gut that eventually, Naruto will reach them and most likely have his vengeance. Gen's three eyes glared at the smaller form of his opponent, but his challenging smirk never left his face. Even though Tian knew he had improved greatly due to his training with Kami and the others, he wouldn't underestimate the Cyberman. After all this creature was created by the Saiyans, and Tian knew they wouldn't have weak little soldiers fighting for them. It would be an insult to the Saiyans' apparent pride which they openly displayed with their cocky grins and narrowed eyes. Without warning, the first Cyberman dashed towards Tian who slipped into his fighting stance. Tian watched the Cyberman carefully while gathering Kai into his palm. A small whitish Kai outline formed around Tian's hand. The Cyberman leaped towards Tian who threw his palm forward, and a sonic wave slammed into the Cyberman. The smaller opponent grunted in pain before flipping in midair and dug its sharp toenails into the ground. Looking up, the Cyberman watched as Tian ran towards him before literally splitting its head open. Tian quickly dodged the acidic attack before using his speed to vanish from sight. The other Z fighters dodged the acid as well and could only watch in slight amazement as the acid carved a clean path on the ground. Good thing we avoided that Gohan muttered. His sensei Piccolo who overheard his student's comment could only nod in agreement. 
Gen reappeared behind the Cyberman whose face twisted into a shocked expression. The Cyberman jumped into the air, but Tian easily caught up to the green alien. Tian rammed his elbow violently into his foe's gut and watched as the Cyberman dropped onto the ground. The Cyberman's arms shook like crazy as it struggled to continue the fight, but it seemed the creature's body wouldn't obey its commands. Tian landed on the ground and gave off a small sigh. Impossible Nappa stated with a look of shock, the Saiyan couldn't believe how the supposed weak earthling took down the Cyberman with ease. All these Cybermen have a battle power of about 1200. They're about as strong as Raditz Nappa heard Vegeta give off one of his cold chuckles and had to repress a shiver. Nappa was by all means a hardened Saiyan warrior with genes that were breeded for battle, but there was something about the evil in his partner that easily made him want to break out in a cold sweat. Then it seems our opponents here have a higher battle power than we thought Vegeta said. The Prince of Saiyans pointed his fingers at the fallen Cyberman before using his Kai to blow it up. Tian who had begun to walk back to his friends turned when he heard the explosion behind him. Everyone present watched as the smoke cleared and the Cyberman had vanished with no trace left behind. Nappa was shocked that Vegeta would do something like that. Why? He simply asked, this was the only question that was racing through his mind. Vegeta simply crossed his arms before smirking. He couldn't fight anymore, so he was of no use to us. So who is going to go next? Vegeta asked the Z fighters. Meanwhile, Nappa gave a stern glare at the remaining Cybermen that had the green aliens shaking in fear. Use your full power this time, go all out on your opponents, or you'll end up just like that last Cyberman, is that understood? The Cybermen quickly shook their heads in agreement. The Z fighters watched as the Cybermen retook their battle stances after watching their one of them get vaporized. Well I guess I'll go next Krillin was about to walk out until a hand clasped onto his shoulder. The young monk looked up to see Amcha smiling down to him. No Krillin, this next one will be mine Yamcha said. Are you sure Yamcha? Yes Krillin, you've been brought once thanks to the Dragon Balls. You die again and it's game over for you. I will take this one and Yamcha gave Krillin a two thumbs up before making his way out onto the battlefield. Both Yamcha and Tian passed the other, their eyes locking for a brief moment. Good luck out there Yamcha Tian whispered. Thanks buddy but don't worry, this will be a piece of cake while Yamcha passed him, Tian couldn't help but worry for Yamcha. Tian knew Yamcha trained hard if not harder than he did for this day. But Tian noticed Yamcha's attitude was of cocky nature, and the three-eyed warrior could only guess that would spell trouble for the former bandit in this fight. Nappa watched as Yamcha made his way over before looking down at one of the Cybermen. You'll be facing this one, don't disappoint me Nappa growled which the Cybermen nodded in fear before rushing out towards Yamcha. Both stood only a few feet from the other, their eyes never leaving the other for even a second. Both moved instantaneously at the same time, their speed untraceable to normal civilians, but the rest of the Z fighters and the Saiyans tracked their movements easily. Multiple sets of eyes watched as black specks clashed with the other over the mountainous battlefield area. Small shockwaves would be released every time the Cybermen and Yamcha slammed into the other. An image of their fighting would appear every few seconds before vanishing. There he appeared and Yamcha sweeped the Cybermen off his feet and twisted to give the small alien a victorious grin. Yamcha lashed out with a foot that nailed the Cyberman in the chin and was about to follow up with the attack, but his foe started to do hand springs to create distance. They're not getting away that easily Yamcha thought before using his speed to appear behind the Cyberman. The Cyberman felt Yamcha materialize behind him and caught a punch that was aimed for his skull. The Cyberman began to swing Yamcha which caused the Z fighter to scream, not in pain but more of surprise. The Cyberman released his hold on Yamcha and watched as he tumbled into the air and his form disappeared into the sun. Not even seconds later, a furious Yamcha raced down from the sky with his foot directed to cave the Cyberman's face in. The Cyberman avoided the strike by flying back and landed on one of the many rock pillars surrounding them. Oh no, you don't Yamcha screamed before following after the Cyberman. As Yamcha got closer, the Cyberman smirked and then without warning lunged for Yamcha. Instead of shock or fear like the Cyberman expected, Yamcha gave another of his own smiles before vanishing. The Cyberman hit nothing but air and began its fall towards the ground. Yamcha reappeared above his falling opponent with his hands cupped together, his face one of concentration. Yamcha gritted his teeth while summoning his Kai into his palms. Seconds later, the sky began to glow a crystal blue as a small sphere of energy swirled in front of Yamcha's cupped hands. This next attack wouldn't be just any regular Kai blast. It would be the Kamehameha wave, the same technique Yamcha had learned and mastered from his sensei master Rashi. Ha! Yamcha threw his hands forward, and the legendary technique sailed from Yamcha and towards the Cyberman. The Cyberman barely had time to scream before the Kamehameha slammed into its body with the force of an elephant. The form of the Cyberman crashed and buried beneath the ground as the Kamehameha pushed and dug into the smaller fighter. Yamcha cut off his power and landed on the ground in front of the Saiyans. 
before him, in a small crater was the smoking form of the Cyberman. Yamcha's gaze peered into the supposed lifeless crimson eyes of the Cyberman as its body continued to lay there. Yamcha was searching for any possible trick the Cyberman could be pulling. When the smoking stopped and the Cyberman still remained motionless, Yamcha could only guess he killed it. That's two Cybermans now Nappa said. Yamcha turned to face the Saiyans, his face basically told everyone the pride he took in his victory. Well that was really easy, it seems we're more powerful than your little squad of green goons here Nappa clenched his fist in anger at the mocking from Yamcha and was about to retort. Nappa Vegeta said sharply, cutting off whatever Nappa was just about to say. Unnoticed to everyone watching, the clawed hands of the Cybermen began to twitch, this was at the moment the smallest sign of life it gave off. Vegeta suddenly sensed the small life left within the Cybermen, and his cold grin came back. Well how about I take on the other four Cybermen by myself Yamcha said. Vegeta let off a laugh that unnerved Yamcha and set the other Z-fighters on guard. Now that I would like to see, sadly we won't get the chance the Saiyan Prince's statement now had everyone on their toes. Piccolo and the others now wondered if Vegeta and Nappa were finally going to step into fight. They had easily proven that they could take the Cybermen on and beat them. But a terrible feeling erupted in the Namekian's stomach, something bad was about to happen. That's when Piccolo and the others finally sensed the life signs of the Cybermen, but then it was already too late. Yamcha barely had time to turn around before the Cybermen latched onto the Z-Fighter in a fierce and tight bear hug. Yamcha strained and struggled against the hold of the Cybermen, but it seemed the Cybermen wouldn't budge an inch. Yamcha glared at the Cybermen who remained emotionless before giving off a deadly laugh. It's over Piccolo stated grimly. Gohan and the others gasped as a light surrounded the two before an explosion detonated. Yamcha's screams of agony could be heard over the loud explosion as the bright orange and white colored flames consumed his body. The others' faces were of complete disbelief. Somewhere else. Naruto was flying around the world as fast as he could towards the fighting. That's when he felt a sudden drop in life energy, he couldn't tell whose it was, but it gave both him and Karama a bad feeling. Damn it, I think someone just died. What's happening right now and why the fuck did West City be so far away Naruto screamed in anger, the question of who possibly died plagued his mind. Naruto prayed to whatever god above that would listen that it wasn't Gohan who died. The blonde Jinchuriki didn't think he could forgive himself if anything happened to Gohan after the promise he made him. Naruto, you better speed it up now. I think the true bloodshed has only just begun Kurama stated which Naruto agreed with. Naruto gathered as much speed as his base form had stored before releasing it in a small burst. A small sonic boom erupted and the wind ripped against his face due to the high speeds he was moving at. Naruto tore through the sky, the people watching from down below could only make out a black speck blasting through the air. Back with the Z fighters. The smoke cleared around the form of Yamcha which was sprawled lifelessly in his own crater. Kamikaze, he had no way to defend himself, Piccolo muttered. Krillin slowly approached Yamcha's body, a small flicker of hope that he was somehow still alive. Krillin reached down and felt for a pulse. There was nothing, that small flicker of hope died and the midget's anger spiked. These dead Krillin's teeth gritted so hard, some were afraid they would crack underneath the pressure. That's when a sudden thought of shock passed through Krillin and he got even more pissed. Yamcha must have known something like this would happen, that's why he stepped in to take my place. Fuck it all, what do I tell Bulma and Puller? Krillin screamed while Vegeta and Nappa laughed at Krillin's emotional distress. That Cyberman was really pathetic, to think he had to blow himself up to kill a weakling like that Nappa said. Yes, now please clean up this filth and let's continue on with the fight Krillin glared at both the Saiyans, and if looks could kill, then the two would be smoldering ashes on the ground. You don't care that he's dead. This is all just a fucked up game to you. Well you dirty bastards. I'll avenge Yamcha's death, I swear it. Krillin declared loudly, anger could practically be seen radiating from the monk's body. Krillin turned and looked at his friends. Everyone get back now Krillin ordered before raising and gathering power in his hands. He lifted his arms above his head, palms facing the sky. A small orange glow surrounded both of Krillin's hands and it seemed to connect above his head. Sparks of light ironing danced off his fingertips and met in the middle with violent clashes. Vegeta simply was unfazed by the threat Krillin had given him before looking towards the Cyberman to his left. Attack the Cyberman didn't need to be told twice and dashed towards Krillin. Krillin seen the Cyberman's advancement towards him and threw his arms forward. With a shout, a huge yellow Kai blast raced towards the Cyberman. The Cyberman skidded to a halt before avoiding the deadly blast. Gyatsu, let's get out of the way Tian said. Piccolo, I think we should get out of the way Gohin said. I was just about to say the same thing Piccolo and Gohin leaped back. As the blast continued to approach the Saiyans, Krillin lifted his arms and the blast changed direction. The blast then split into smaller but more faster Kai spheres and headed towards each individual Cyberman. Most of the Cybermen were vaporized in the blasts. 
Then one another remaining Kai Sphere attacked both Vegeta and Nappa, who made no effort to dodge. Boom. Yen was the first to recover and stared at Krillin in slight amazement. Krillin that was amazing. Yeah, way to go Krillin Gohan said with a smile, while Krillin gave a pant of slight exhaustion. Then without warning, one final Cyberman lunged from a narrow crack within a mountain beside them and headed towards Gohan. A month ago, Gohan would have probably been terrified of the oncoming Cyberman, but his training with Naruto really brought him out of his shell. Gohan whipped out his sword and made a dash at the Cyberman. Gohan made a slashing motion as he ducked under the lunging Cyberman. The Cyberman went completely still while Gohan simply began to resheath his blade. When he clicked the sword back into place, the Cyberman's head rolled from its shoulders and fell to the ground at the creature's feet. The body gave off a small spurt of green blood before collapsing. I'm going to have to clean my blade off later Gohan muttered while Piccolo gave his student a grin. Piccolo honestly expected Gohan to freeze up just because of the little to no battle experience he had, except for the spars with him. Piccolo now realized that he would have to look forward to what Gohan would do next to impress him. So it seems the kid has some fighting spirit after all the familiar voice of Vegeta said. Each Z fighter turned their head to see the smoke around them finally clear and it showed the two Saiyans were unharmed. I guess the game is over, you ready to fight them Nappa? Vegeta asked which his partner gave off a laugh. Hell yeah, these punks will be begging for mercy by the time I'm done with them, Nappa said. I can't believe it, Krillin's attack had no effect on them at all Tien thought. Krillin, how much power did you put behind that Gohan asked. Full power Nappa and Vegeta began to casually stroll towards them and the Z fighters tensed up. Vegeta stopped as he watched Nappa continue forward. Don't kill the Namiki and Nappa, we need him for the Dragon Balls. Understood Nappa glanced out towards his opponents and mentally began to choose which one he wanted to slaughter first. Without warning, Piccolo appeared in front of Nappa. You're mine. He shouted, Piccolo fired a blast which Nappa dodged. Now that's not nice a voice said behind Piccolo, the Namekian couldn't turn around as Nappa had appeared behind him and delivered a kick to Piccolo. Piccolo was sent flying and crashed through a small boulder. Mr. Piccolo Gohan shouted. Well I guess this will be some fun after all Nappa said while landing on the ground. The air seemed to blow quietly through the area while everyone was waiting for Piccolo to emerge. They knew an attack like that wouldn't keep the Namekian down for long. Ha! Piccolo's voice shouted as the rubble that had buried him seconds ago exploded in a shower of dirt and gravel. Piccolo stood up, he didn't look injured from the attack at all, but everyone could tell he was annoyed due to the fierce scowl on his green face. Okay brats, just give me a second to get Riedi Nappa sneered while clenching his fists and his muscles bulged. Veins appeared on Nappa's muscles, sending blood, adrenaline and power coursing through the Saiyan's being. The ground began to shake underneath everyone while Nappa continued to gather his power. This is unreal Krillin shouted, his face twisted into an expression of fear and shock. The whole ground is shaking Tian said. Little pebbles and smaller chunks of boulders began to levitate due to the monstrous power that was being released through the battlefield. Mr. Piccolo, what do we do Gohan asked his teacher while using his kai to keep him from falling. We stand firm Gohan like true warriors and try not to die, Piccolo said, while a small trail of sweat dripped down the Namekian skin, as he could still feel the seemingly endless energy spike. Nappa finally decided to stop powering up and the ground stopped its shaking. Now, let us begin Nappa smirked. Otherworld. Hey that's the castle son Goku said. He remembered passing the same palace when he had reached the halfway point on Snake Way. Goku was about to pass by the castle before a power erupted within it. The power immediately had Goku come to a stop. Goku compared this power to what he felt from the Saiyans earlier and it made them look small in comparison. Goku noticed the door of the palace was opened, but the inside of the massive structure was pitch black inside. Wow, what kind of being has this much energy Goku thought before his enhanced hearing picked up the sound of footsteps. Don't worry, I'm not here to hurt you son Goku a cheerful male voice said as a figure stepped out from within the darkness. The figure was a tall male with bright blonde hair and blue eyes. He wore some kind of green vest and a white cloak overneath it. Goku caught sight of a few three-pointed knives that were tucked on the stranger's belt. Goku didn't feel threatened by this stranger as the man's aura that he released was kind and not threatening. Hey, who are you? Goku's curiosity getting the better of him. Just call me Minato Namikaze, and like I said I'm here to give you assistance, the now identified Minato said. Well Minato, I can't stay in chat because. The earth is in danger and you need to get down this road as fast as you can. Yeah I know Minato said while almost laughing at Goku's surprised face. Well how can you help me then? Goku asked. Minato simply walked towards Goku and placed a hand on his shoulder. Let's just say, I can get you to the end of this road in a flash Minato smiled, and before Goku could ask how he could do that, both vanished in a yellow flash. The golden aura shrouded Nappa's body as he eyed the very first fighter that he mentally considered a victim. 
Nappa's eyes finally rested on Tien before charging forward. Tien quickly got into his defensive stance as Nappa finally threw his first attack. Tien avoided the first punch before blocking another. When Tien blocked the punch however, pain ripped and burned every nerve and cell in his hand. Tien couldn't hide his shock as he watched his hand turn a darkened brown and small sparks of lightning danced around it. Yen, watch out. Piccolo shouted while the Z fighter looked up to see Nappa throw another vicious strike. Tien knew though he wouldn't be able to avoid the strike, so he decided to block it the very best way he could. But something very different happened when Nappa's hit connected. Tien's arm completely broke off in pain he had never imagined or experienced in his life tore through his body. Tien screamed in pain as blood shot from the stump where his arm once rested. Mr. Tian Chiaotsu cried in terror, watching his friend and mentor get decimated so easily. Vegeta who was watching the fight, simply shook his head in a sick kind of amusement. They sure are fragile things huh Vegeta said. Nappa suddenly went on the attack again, but this time Tian leaped high in the air. But before Tian could perform a counter-attack, Nappa appeared above Tian and did a backflip kick that sent the three-eyed warrior spiraling into the ground. Krillin gritted his teeth in hate as he watched Tian get picked apart piece by piece. The monk glanced out of the corner of his eye and seen the lifeless form of Yamcha still sprawled out on the ground. Without warning, Krillin started to run towards Tian. No, don't do it Gohin shouted, but Krillin ignored the son of Goku's warning. Nappa watched Krillin's charge towards his Tian and sneered. Don't get involved Nappa threw his hands up, index and middle finger shooting straight towards the sky. A powerful explosive wave shredded the land around them to bits and chunks of rubble and small patches of grass. Some of the mountains around the fighters were lucky to have survived the assault. Krillin had seen his life flash before his eyes and realized that the Saiyan had almost killed him. Krillin was shocked to see the size of the newly formed crater in the landscape. Krillin took slow breaths to calm himself down and keep him from having a heart attack. Meanwhile, Piccolo was trying to find the bottom of the crater, but as he stared into the abyss, he couldn't find it at all. I can't see the bottom Piccolo said, shock completely evident in the Namekian's voice. Gohin then noticed someone from their group was missing. Hey, where Chiaotsu? Gohin asked, and the others seemed to notice the pale-skinned friend of Tian's was missing as well. No it can't be Tian said, he didn't want to believe that Chiaotsu was dead. Ah did I blow up your little friend, don't worry you'll be joining him soon enough, Nappa started to say before he felt something latch onto his back. Nappa tried to reach for the thing holding onto to him, but his arms wouldn't go that far. Goodbye Mr. Tian, thanks for everything Tian recognized Chiaotsu's voice, but before he could ask what he meant, another explosion erupted, but this time it was centered around Nappa. Uo Tian's cries of sorrow echoed loudly, sadness and frustration were overlapping all the other emotions Tian felt at the moment. To think the squirt would sacrifice himself in order to take out the Saiyan, I must say I'm impressed Piccolo chuckled while Gohin shedded silent tears for Chiaotsu. I wouldn't be too sure about that Vegeta said catching their attention immediately. Vegeta simply pointed up the cloud of smoke that had engulfed Nappa after the explosion. To the Z fighter's horror, they could faintly see the outline of a figure floating in the cloud. And when a small gust of wind blew through and pushed the cloud away, it revealed Nappa who was completely unharmed. The only thing different were the black stains on the Saiyan's armor. Well since that's now over with, let's get back to our fight, Nappa grinned viciously. Silence drifted over the land as every one of the Z fighters were shocked that not only did Chiaotsu's self-sacrifice fail to not only kill the Saiyan, but it seemed the attack hadn't even left a scratch on Nappa's face. The small fighter's ashes drifted from Nappa's Saiyan armor and off into the wind. Tian shed tears, and his teeth were gritted in frustration. He couldn't believe he let his longtime friend give up his life, and it was for nothing. Chiaotsu has already been brought back once with the Dragon Balls. Which means it won't work on him a second time. Tian shouted, slamming his fists on the ground in anger. He knew Chiaotsu was gone and it would be forever. Nappa descended from the sky and smirked viciously at the sorrow-filled warrior. Don't worry about your little buddy, you'll be joining him very soon enough Nappa said. Tian's anger spiked due to the Saiyan's mocking words, he grabbed a hand filled with gravel before crushing it in his palms. You'll pay for this, I swear of it. Tian dashed from the ground towards Nappa, not caring anymore that his life was in danger. All he cared about at the moment was knocking the smug look from Nappa's face and avenging the life of Chiaotsu. Yen began to throw rapid combinations of punches and kicks towards Nappa, but it proved useless as his much bigger opponent kept blocking the attacks with ease. What a monster Piccolo whispered, the Namekian had never seen such a powerful opponent before. And if Nappa's partner was as strong or if stronger than him. Piccolo almost shook in an emotion he had never felt before, fright. Piccolo really hoped that Goku would arrive soon or it would be the end of the earth. He can't even lay a finger on him Gohin observed sadly, he desperately hoped that Tian would achieve some sort of vengeance against Nappa, but it seemed that Nappa wouldn't give him the chance. 
Yen threw another punch, but instead of blocking the strike, Nappa dodged it. The rock behind Nappa easily shattered as Tian hit it instead. As chunks of smaller rocks began falling towards the ground, Tian turned to face Nappa, but the Saiyan smashed his knee into the Z fighter's gut. The three-eyed warrior had trouble breathing as he was sent flying in the air, and once gravity set in, Tian began to fall towards the ground. Despite the pain Tian felt, once he hit the ground, Tian immediately ran towards Nappa again and continued to assault the Saiyan with all that he had. But just like before, Nappa showed how easy it was to avoid or block Tian's attacks. Tian's not going to be able to hold out much longer. I've got to help him Krillin was about to run into the fight before Piccolo interrupted his brave but very foolish charge. No Krillin, we all strike together when he goes in for an attack, but not before that Piccolo's gaze then shifted towards Gohan. You understand that Gohan? Gohan looked towards his sensei and nodded. That's some plan you three have there, let's hope it works for you Vegeta called out which shocked them. Piccolo turned towards the Saiyan prince whose arms were crossed, and by the way Vegeta was smirking, it told the Namekian how confident Vegeta was in himself. Now keep your eyes on the battle. Remember you only have one true shot at this, Vegeta said while Piccolo scoffed. I wouldn't be so confident Saiyan, not after Goku arrives. Then that little smirk of yours will be cleaned right off your face, Piccolo said. Is that so, you've truly got me shaking in my boots now. I'm curious though, this Goku guy is your ace in the hole. Vegeta asked while Piccolo laughed. Wouldn't you like to know? Nappa smashed right into Tian and sent him crashing right into the mountain behind him. Tian's body bounced off the mountain before it collided violently with the ground. The Z fighter had to resist the urge to cough up the blood in his mouth. His body was practically shouting at him to stay down, his muscles ached, and his vision kept blurring. No, I've got to continue fighting Tian thought, images of his best friend flashing through his mind, gave Tian the strength to get to his feet. You're starting to bore me now, it's time to die, Nappa said while ascending into the sky. Vegeta simply laughed at his partner's mocking. Anyone except the Namekian can choose to die now. I'll get to kill the green bean later Nappa said, while Piccolo growled at the comment towards his skin color. Nappa didn't seem to notice Tian gathering a large amount of power into his palms. I swear Chiaotzu that I will be seeing you again soon, but I must take this Saiyan down with me, Tian pumped more of his Kai into what he knew would be his final attack. He was putting all of his Kai into this technique which would drain his life force and kill him almost instantly. But Tian didn't care, as long as Nappa died along with him. He would happily sacrifice his life with this final move. Tian's right palm sparked with light ironing and a small golden hue surrounded it. Tian pointed his hand towards the sky at the unsuspecting Saiyan. Ah you bastard. Tribeam ha. A massive blast exploded out of Tian's hand and towards Nappa. Nappa suddenly felt a massive increase in power and seen a golden light rising in the sky. Nappa barely had time to turn around before he was swallowed in the river of Kai energy. Tian didn't stop at all, he kept pushing more and more power into the blast. Within the beam, Nappa screamed in utter shock as he couldn't believe the pathetic earthling could hit him with such a powerful attack and he failed to notice it. Piccolo and even Vegeta were surprised by the massive wave of power that Tian had unleashed. Mountains were blown apart and any close by wildlife were sadly vaporized. Tian finally felt all his power leave him and his attack ended. Tian struggled to even look up as he seen a golden cloud of smoke, shrouding Nappa's hopefully dead form. But to everyone besides Vegeta's horror, when the smoke cleared Nappa was in almost perfect condition. The only changes was most of the Saiyan's armor was missing and small cuts were opened up on Nappa. Well I must say I'm impressed Nappa said. Tian's vision began to darken, but not before he caught a final glimpse of the monster before him. No Tian said before he collapsed onto the ground. He died only moments after. But Naruto. Naruto was close to the battle, he could feel it. Naruto had felt some impressive power spikes and even caught sight of some sort of golden light exploding into the sky. Then Naruto felt another Kai signature vanish. Dread filled the last shinobi system, he couldn't believe he let another person die. Damn it, that's it no more playing around. I've practically let the Saiyans kill two of Gohin's friends. It's time for some revenge Naruto's anger grew while summoning his Charka. Naruto mentally sent a thanks to Lee and Guy for teaching him this technique. Heyman Kai. Naruto shouted while unlocking the first celestial gate. A new power flooded Naruto's system before he shot off even quicker than before towards the fight. Another world. Ami and King Yama chatted while waiting for Goku's arrival. King Yama knew that Goku would probably get there late, so he asked one of his longtime friend for some assistance. He remembered meeting Minato Namakas when his father, the Shinigami, faded away. Minato and the other Hokages were asked to help King Yama should a problem arise in the check-in station. They happily agreed, after all they had nothing better to do in the afterlife. But they made it clear to King Yama that they were allowed to visit their loved ones whenever they wanted to. King Yama accepted the deal and a beautiful friendship formed between them all. 
Ping Yama right now was explaining the history of the elemental nations to Kami who was shocked and intrigued that the world used to be like that so many centuries ago. Goku and Minato arrived in the check-in station in a yellow flash. While Minato was perfectly fine, Goku almost lost his lunch due to the unexpected technique. Kami was shocked by the sudden appearance of Goku and Minato, while King Yama chuckled. You always know how to make an entrance Minato Minato gave a smile while rubbing the back of his head in embarrassment. We both know King Yama that the Horatian technique was the fastest way to get Goku here, and I didn't want to risk anything with the fate of the world in the balance Minato said. Kami looked like he wanted to question Minato about the technique, but before he could, King Yama interrupted him. Kami-san you don't have time for questions. Get Goku back to Earth. Yes King Yama-sama Kami said while placing a hand on Goku's shoulder. Wow Minato that was an amazing thing you just did. I wish I could talk some more but like you said, better not risk it with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. Indeed Goku, please save the earth and say hello to my son for me, Minato smiled. Wait who's your son? Goku asked. You'll know when you meet him Goku was about to say something else before he vanished along with Kami from the other world. Goku and my son are going to make one devastating team, won't they? Minato asked while King Yama chuckled. I believe so, if your son is anything like you. Then I'm sure everything will turn out fine King Yama said. Minato couldn't help but feel pride swell up from inside him when King Yama said that. But Minato knew his son had long ago surpassed him, so Naruto wasn't just like him. He was even better than him. Without another word, the fourth Hokage vanished from the check-in station. Minato planned to watch the fight with his beloved wife Kashina and cheer their son on all the way. Back on the battlefield. While Piccolo and the others silently mourned over the death of Tien. Only Vegeta and Gohan felt an increase in power towards the north of them. Gohan right away recognized the energy and knew without a doubt it was Naruto. He was coming to help them, just like he had promised. Gohan cried tears of happiness, his brother figure was on his way. Vegeta couldn't say he was as happy as Gohan was at the moment. Even the Saiyan prince himself was a little disturbed by the massive Kai signature heading their way. Is that Kakarot's power, but how could such a low-class warrior possess such power Vegeta knew that even he would have to be careful of this upcoming presence. But if this is Kakarot, then we should get the fight moving forward, Vegeta muttered before facing Nappa. I think it's time you start the killing now Nappa. I'm sensing a huge power heading our way, and if it's Kakarot, I want him to see his friends and son dead upon his arrival Nappa grinned, he always liked the way Vegeta thought, especially when it came to finally killing their opponents. No, that's not my daddy Gohan suddenly shouted while everyone, including the remaining Z fighters, turned to see Gohan wearing the brightest smile they had seen in a while. Oh really Brad, then who is it? Vegeta asked, curious to why the child would be so happy if it wasn't his father. Because it's the guy who I look up to as a big brother. He taught me to fight before Mr. Piccolo did, and he along with my dad, gave me a reason to believe you two bullies will be defeated today. His name is. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze Voi said before a figure appeared in a swirl of wind and leaves. Vegeta's head snapped towards the figure to see Naruto glaring heavily at him and his partner. Piccolo was shocked and inwardly happy he finally found the answer to who had trained Gohan before he had. But the Namikian wondered if this Naruto guy could really make a big difference in this fight. Big brother. Gohan shouted while running towards Naruto and embraced a blonde Jinchuriki in a hug. Naruto looked down towards Gohan, and his eyes softened when he seen the joyful look Gohan was giving him. Naruto patted Gohan on the head. Hey Gohan, it's great to see you again. I'm sorry it took me so long to get here, but I had to pick up something along the way Naruto said, and then to everyone besides Gohan's amazement. He unsealed his mother's sword in a poof of smoke. Dear Gohan, this was my mother's blade she named the Crimson Death, and I'm passing it on to you, my little brother Gohan stared in complete awe as Naruto handed him a sword that was even bigger than the one he was currently carrying. Once this is all over, I'm going to give you more Kenjutsu lessons. But right now I have some Saiyan ass to kick Naruto's happy expression shifted to a serious one. He watched as Nappa landed on the ground with a smug expression. Oh look we have a real bad ass here Vegeta, I'm so scared Nappa mocked while Naruto began to walk forward. Laugh it up big boy, enjoy it while you can. You two have fucked with the wrong planet and will pay for it with your lives Naruto said while Vegeta and Nappa laughed. Vegeta well impressed with Naruto's display and power, knew it wasn't a match for his. So the Saiyan prince had nothing to worry about, but he didn't know how Nappa would handle this situation. What Vegeta didn't know though was Naruto was suppressing a great amount of his power. Before I forget Gohan, your dad is on his way Naruto called out, his attention never leaving the Saiyans. Gohan couldn't describe the happiness he was feeling. Not only was Naruto here, but his dad would be joining them shortly. Somewhere else. It was true, moments ago Son Goku had finally appeared on Earth and gave his thanks to Kami before leaving the lookout. 
Goku had enough power to possibly fly towards the battlefield, but he thought it would be better to save as much energy as possible. So currently, Goku was riding the Nimbus Cloud with a new pouch of Sensu Beans on his belt. Goku felt the winds whip against his face as the father of Gohan traveled at high speeds through the air. I'm back guys, so please hold on Goku shouted. Back at the battlefield. So little man, you think you can fight the great Nappa and actually have a chance of winning? Nappa asked. I plan not only to fight you but to kill you Naruto simply resonded. Nappa was thrown into a fit of laughter at the very thought of a earthling, leaving even a scratch on his armor. Sure you will kid, you know what. How about I give you the first punch Nappa mocked while leaning his head forward to add further insult to his statement. Naruto gave off a smirk of his own before he casually made his towards Nappa. Meanwhile, Vegeta had his eyes narrowed. Nappa you fool, can't you feel that his power easily surpasses yours? Oh well Nappa will have to learn the hard way for underestimating his opponents Vegeta thought as Naruto finally stood in front of Nappa. So you ready Naruto asked. Yeah go ahead, you won't even leave a mark, now Nappa's arrogance was really starting to annoy Naruto, it reminded him of all the shinobi that looked down on him in his younger years as a genin. Everyone besides Vegeta watched with cautious glances as Naruto pulled his fist back. Finally after what seemed like forever, Naruto finally punched Nappa in the face. What the others didn't know was he channeled a bit of chakra into his fist, he knew how tough a Saiyan skin seemed to be, after watching some of Goku's past battles. He sent a mental thanks once again, but this time it was to Tsunade for teaching him the secret to her super strength. To the Z fighter's astonishment, Nappa not only left his feet, but was sent flying back at speeds that were almost untraceable to them. Vegeta simply sidestepped and allowed his partner to continue sailing through the air, before colliding with a mountain behind the Saiyan prince, and it crumbled on top of Nappa. Naruto simply lowered his fist after a few moments, seeing Nappa wouldn't be getting up for a while. That was incredible Krillin said. Wow Naruto, you're amazing Gohan cheered while Naruto smiled at his little brother. We've barely left a mark on Nappa, and this guy takes him down in one blow, Unreal Piccolo muttered before he heard Vegeta start to chuckle. Well that was impressive, for an earthling of course. Thanks, just to let you know that was under half my strength. So are you going to take your partner and leave? Naruto asked. Most certainly not, why would I leave? Just because you beat Nappa, don't get the idea you can beat me Vegeta smirked while Naruto frowned, this guy reminded him of Sasuke before he got better, the arrogance and all. Vegeta's aura was laced with so much evil it would almost make Orochimaru shiver in fear. Okay but before we fight, let's move to a different location. I would hate for anything bad to happen to my friends and little brother during our fight. And there's too many wildlife creatures around here as well Naruto turned and looked past the Z fighters to see small little animals and dinosaurs watching them with curious faces. Naruto couldn't help but once again smile, it seemed even when things were looking bad for Earth. The innocence of not only life but the smaller creatures that inhabited it made everything much easier to deal with. It gave Naruto more of a reason to save the Earth. Fine by me, where we fight will be your resting place, both warriors summoned their Kai and began to levitate in the air, their eyes never leaving the other. Lead the way Vegeta said. Don't worry I will Naruto said before blasting off with Vegeta right behind him. Naruto wait. Gohin shouted, but it was already too late as both were just specks disappearing beyond the horizon. Should we follow them Krillin asked before Piccolo shook his head negatively. No because we still have one problem to deal with Piccolo said, and before the two could ask what the Namekian meant, another huge explosion erupted from in front of them. Chunks of rubble were sent flying everywhere, while the Z fighters had to shield themselves from the debris. Where is that bastard? A clear enraged Nappa shouted. Everyone could see how pissed the Saiyan was, and it probably didn't help as a bruise formed on Nappa's cheek in the shape of a fist. Nappa was not only bruised on the outside, but internally as well, his pride had taken a huge fall when Naruto had knocked him out for those brief few minutes. Don't worry about him because your fight is still with us, Piccolo said while sliding into his fighting stance that was mimicked by Gohan. Krillin took his own stance, but you could see the plain fear that was basically plastered on the monk's face. Once I'm done with you three, then I will kill that blonde bastard slowly and painfully, Nappa said while Gohan growled in anger while pointing the katana, crimson death at Nappa. You're not going to lay a finger on my big brother or else. Or else what brat? I'll make you regret it Gohan shouted which got surprised looks from Piccolo and Krillin. They both knew Gohan was a sweet child, so it surprised them to see the son of Goku acting so violently. Inside Gohan, his Saiyan blood was beginning to awaken and starting to boil. It was the primal urges from the Saiyan genetics within him that made him so defensive over the way Nappa threatened Naruto. The urge to defend his family and all those precious to him. Oh you'll make me regret it huh? Well let's see you back up those words. Nappa rushed forward, ready to kill Gohan and Krillin. Even though Nappa was angered by what Gohan had said, he still remembered his orders from Vegeta to not kill the Namekian. 
the Kolo and Krillin vanished while Gohan took out his other sword and took the Kinjutsu stance Naruto had taught H.I.M. Think Killer B's stance, except with less swords. Gohan dashed out and met Nappa in a battle of fists, kicks, slashes and avoiding. Nappa was doing most of the punching and kicking, while Gohan was trying to cut the Saiyan to ribbons with his swords. It was also thanks to Gohan's smaller size that he was able to avoid Nappa's strikes. But everyone could clearly see that Nappa, even though was having a hard time trying to hit the smaller Saiyan was doing a lot better in their fight. Nappa had more battle experience than Gohan, and that experience was showing as he expertly dodged each one of Gohan's strikes with the swords. Nappa dodged another slash from Gohan and finally found an opening for attack. Now you're mine Nappa said, but failed to notice the slight shift in Gohan's posture. Nappa lashed out with his foot fully expecting to hit Gohan, but was surprised when his foot simply passed through the child's body, which began to fade into nothing. What? Nappa shouted in confusion before Krillin and Piccolo materialized before him and went on the assault. Nappa avoided everything the two threw at him, and no matter how much they tried, it seemed they couldn't land a single attack on Nappa. Suddenly Nappa smashed his knee into Krillin's gut, which doubled the monk over, before punching the smaller fighter into the ground. Krillin's body bounced off the ground while he let out a gasp of pain. Piccolo wasn't doing any better, and just like Krillin was easily disposed of when Nappa fist slammed into the green warrior's jaw. Piccolo laid sprawled out with violet-colored blood dripping from his jaw. Nappa smirked at Piccolo and was about to go finish off Krillin before he felt a blast slam into his back. Nappa gritted his teeth, that blast hurt, and Nappa could actually feel the skin on his back slightly start to burn. Nappa growled and turned to see it had been Gohan who had fired the blast. Small smoke trails left Gohan's palms as glared at Nappa. Leave them alone you bully. Gohan began to fire off a volley of Kai blasts. Nappa raced across the battlefield, trying to dodge every blast Gohan fired at him. The ground behind Nappa was littered with craters where the blasts had missed their intended target. Suddenly Nappa vanished faster than Gohan could track. The back of Gohan's skull rattled as Nappa appeared behind him and kicked the younger Saiyan. Gohan's body skipped like a stone due to the sheer force of the attack. His body skidded to a stop next to Piccolo, who still showed no signs of movement. Nappa calmly walked forward and picked Gohan up by the scruff of his collar. Come on brat, you can't be done yet. We've only just begun Nappa sneered. Your mind the familiar deep voice of Piccolo said before jumping up and grabbing Nappa's tail. Piccolo fully expected for Nappa to start feeling pain and to drop to his knees. But to his shock and horror, Nappa simply turned towards the Namekian with his sneer and cocky attitude. Unlike that fool Raditz, I trained my tail so I no longer feel the effects when someone grabs it, Nappa said before he elbowed Piccolo, which instantly sent Piccolo meeting the dirt once again. Gohan decided to act on Nappa's distraction and need the older Saiyan in the chin. Nappa felt like his teeth jumped into the back of his throat when Gohan struck him and released his grip on his collar. That out of the way Gohan Krillin said, and Gohan turned to see Krillin holding a golden swirling disc above his head. Gohan decided to heed Krillin's warning and did a couple of handsprings back to create distance between himself and Nappa. The Structo disc Krillin threw the disc forward and hoped Nappa would be dumb enough not to dodge it. Nappa seen the disc flying towards him and usually would show his dominance and take the attack head on. But something in Nappa's head screamed danger as the Destructo disc got closer. Nappa chose to follow his instincts and tilted his head at the last moment and felt the disc grazed his cheek. The Destructo disc continued past Nappa before slicing the mountain behind him in half. Nappa felt something drip down his cheek and checked to see what it was. When he retracted his hand, Nappa was inwardly shocked by what he saw. Crimson-colored liquid stained Nappa's palm, it was his blood. Shock immediately turned to downright anger. You fucking bastards. Nappa shouted while gathering Kai into his right fist. His fist began to glow with white energy, and it was directed towards Krillin. With a roar, Nappa launched the blast at Krillin, who knew if the attack hit him, it would be instant death for him. Krillin leaped into the air and threw his arms forward to shield himself, as the blast detonated where he previously stood. The shower of light spread through the entire area, almost blinding anyone who didn't cover themselves. When it died down, an impressively large crater was formed. Nappa dashed towards Krillin and before he knew what was going on, Nappa reintroduced Krillin to his fist. The former student of Master Rashi collided with the earth and stopped moving, the only signs of life was his groaning and slight breathing. Don't drop your guard earths come Nappa said. Gohan appeared behind Nappa with Kashina's sword in hand and already in motion. Nappa felt a jolt of hot pain rush through his system when Gohan sliced at his exposed back. Nappa wildly threw an elbow back, but Gohan evaded it and cut Nappa across his stomach. Nappa was now beyond pissed, and before Gohan knew what happened, the older Saiyan slammed both of his fists onto Gohan's head, and the son of Goku's body hit the surface hard. That's three times you pieces of garbage have made me bleed. I think it's time I've ended your lives a cloak of white light ironing, shrouded Nappa's body. 
Nappa pulled his hand back before throwing it forward. Die. Gohin struggled to look up and seen a tunnel of pure white death heading straight for him. Naruto, Mr. Piccolo. I'm sorry for failing you Gohin thought sadly, he knew he wouldn't be able to escape the blast and grimly accepted his oncoming death. Piccolo ran as fast as he could move. Images of the past few months with him training Gohin began to flash through his mind in a rapid sequence. He couldn't let Gohin die. Piccolo made it just in time as he threw himself in front of Gohin's fallen form and took the blast head on. Piccolo screamed out in agony and his guy began to shred around his body. An Amikian couldn't describe another time he had felt this much pain, nothing could compare to it. Nappa watched as his attack ended and was hoping to see the blackened remains of Kakarot's kid, but to his shock, Piccolo stood in front of Gohan, with his arms stretched out and steam rising from his body. Amma Piccolo muttered before collapsing. Gohan was shocked that Piccolo had intercepted the blast that was meant to kill him. Mr. Piccolo. To think the son of the Demon King Piccolo sacrifices his life to save one brat, pathetic Piccolo chuckled weakly. Please Mr. Piccolo you have to be alright. Dad's going to be here any second and big brother is going to beat the other Saiyan Gohan began to cry, his own memories of Piccolo and him training together flashed through his mind. Gohan you're the only one that didn't treat me like I was some sort of monster. I'm proud to be able to call you my friend and student. Stay owl of kid Piccolo passed away right there with a smile on his face and fresh tears dripping from his eyes. Nuo. With Goku. Goku finally reached the wasteland when he felt Piccolo's Kai signature vanish. Goku's onyx eyes widened in surprise. Piccolo, oh no. The Nimbus cloud began to pick up speed, but Goku knew it wouldn't be fast enough. I'm sorry King Kai, but I have to save them Goku closed his eyes and muttered the word Kaiken before him and the Nimbus cloud were surrounded in an aura of red energy. A burst of power flooded Goku's system before he leaped off the cloud and shot through the air. The Nimbus cloud could only watch as the Saiyan easily speed forward and disappeared from its sight. Back with Gohan and the others. Gohan glared ferociously at Nappa who sneered right back at him. Gohan sat crimson death down by his side before throwing his palms up above his head. Lysenko. That's it brat, give it your best shot Nappa taunted which infuriated Gohan more. Gohan knew the Saiyan didn't care that he killed one of his senseis and best friend. Just like Krillin had said earlier, it was just a game to them. Gohan released the Masenko attack while Nappa cocked his fist back and struck the blast with his fist. The Kai attack crashed into a mountain which erupted in a column of orange flames. A mixture of dirt and smog began to drift towards the atmosphere while the fire began to slowly die out. Nappa felt his whole arm began to go numb in the process. Well I will be damned kid, you're tougher than I thought and you're a pain in the ass with that sword of yours Gohan panted before dropping to his knees, he had used of his remaining energy in that attack. Gohan glanced back at his fallen master and gave a bitter smile. I'm sorry Piccolo, but I couldn't avenge you Nappa stood over Gohan with his boot raised high above Gohan. Say hello to the Namekian in the next world kid Nappa slammed his foot down and waited for it to make contact with Gohan. But to his shock, Gohan had vanished. Gohan had his eyes closed and waited for Nappa to crush him under the weight of his boot. He had been so distracted that he didn't notice a figure pick him up and hold him protectively in his arms. Don't worry you're safe now Gohan Gohan knew that voice, but he thought he was dreaming. Gohan slowly reopened his eyes and came face to face with his father, son Goku. Dad it's really you Gohan whispered before Goku set him back down on his feet. Yeah Gohan it's me. I can't believe how strong you've gotten Goku said which got a bright smile from his son. Krillin would be dancing in joy if he could move at the moment. Goku had finally returned and he knew Nappa would finally get what was coming to him. Goku pulled out two senzu beans and gave one to Gohan. Here you go Gohan, eat it and you'll be back to full strength. Yeah sure thing dad Gohan did as his dad told him and ate the bean. And in an instant, his strength returned to normal and his wounds healed. Goku gave his last bean to Krillin who accepted it gratefully. While Krillin began to talk about how they could finally defeat the Saiyans, Goku glanced around to see the diseased forms of Yamcha, Tian and Piccolo. Goku's anger suddenly spiked which caught the attention of his son and Krillin. I will take care of this guy, you both just relax now, Goku said in a calm tone, but everyone could hear the anger laced beneath it. Before Krillin could protest, Goku was already walking towards Nappa who took his fighting stance. Wait Goku. Gohan put a hand in front of Krillin to stop him. Krillin wait, don't you sense dad's power. Yeah but can you ever remember a time when you seen Goku this mad before Krillin asked while Gohan shook his head negatively. I have never seen dad this mad before, but I can tell the real fight is about to begin Gohan said. With Naruto and Vegeta. Both warriors stood on their own mountain, wild wind swept through the desert area and would have carried away any regular person. But it didn't even budge Naruto or Vegeta. Vegeta's arms were crossed and his arrogant smirk was still in place. 
Naruto had his eyes narrowed, he had felt Piccolo's and the other's Kai clash with Nappa's. Then suddenly he felt Piccolo's vanish from the face of the earth. Naruto cursed himself mentally for not doing a better job of killing Nappa when he had the chance. But Naruto knew that Vegeta would be the bigger threat, so he had to save whatever energy he could to face the Saiyan Prince. You should feel honored Earthling, not a lot of warriors get to face an elite like me, especially a low class one like yourself Vegeta said. Naruto wouldn't be surprised if Vegeta's eyes morph into a fully developed Sharingan. Vegeta definitely had the stuck up Achiha attitude. All he was missing was the Keki Genkai. Even a low class warrior can surpass an elite fighter with enough training and a smart mind, Naruto said which caused Vegeta to chuckle. You're a funny one aren't you? Well let me show you the power that no amount of training could surpass Vegeta slipped into his battle stance. Don't take me lightly Vegeta because you've never faced an opponent like me before. Today Vegeta you'll be fighting the Rakudame Hokage of Kanahagakur. My name is Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze and I will make you regret coming to this planet Naruto slipped into his own stance, a mixture of the strong fist and the one he learned during Sage Training Wat's the name of this fighting style. Well let's see you back up those words Brad. Without another word, both Naruto and Vegeta flew at the other. The battle for Earth truly began. Battle for Earth truly began. Naruto was the one who made the first move. The mountain underneath the shinobi's feet cracked as he charged towards Vegeta. Vegeta leaned to the side as Naruto's fist grazed by his cheek. Vegeta smirked before throwing his own punch back. Naruto used his free hand and caught Vegeta's punch which surprised a Saiyan prince for only a moment. Naruto jerked back which disrupted Vegeta's balance and tightened his grip on Vegeta's fist before swinging him around. Naruto released Vegeta and sent the Saiyan warrior towards one of the surrounding mountains. Vegeta smirked before doing a couple of backflips and then landed on his feet. Vegeta then vanished from view in a burst of speed. Naruto's sapphire eyes glanced around the landscape, looking for anything that would give him an idea on where Vegeta would appear. Naruto would lie if he said he wasn't nervous at the moment, after all it was his first real battle in over a few centuries. Naruto's senses went on high alert as Vegeta reappeared behind Naruto and attacked. Naruto ducked under Vegeta's fist before lashing out with a kick that Vegeta avoided as well. Naruto reached into his weapon pouch and watched with a cautious gaze as Vegeta backed away from him. Naruto pulled out three shuriken before throwing them at Vegeta who raised an eyebrow. Oh don't tell me those little metal stars of yours are supposed to scare me Vegeta mocked, not noticing Naruto going through hand seals. Page shuriken bunch and jutsu Naruto called out. Vegeta's eyes widened in surprise as the three shuriken began to multiply before his very eyes. Vegeta quickly released a shockwave of Kai that blasted away the oncoming wave of shuriken. Vegeta turned his sight back onto Naruto, only to find that he had disappeared. Naruto materialized next to Vegeta before blasting him in the face with a vicious right hook. Naruto kept assaulting Vegeta's face with punch after punch before twisting in a complete 360 spin and had his leg on a course towards Vegeta's head. Hinoha Senpu the roundhouse kick connected and sent Vegeta flying towards another mountain. Vegeta once again flipped in midair before charging at Naruto and rammed their skulls together. Naruto was so surprised by Vegeta's sudden counter-attack, he had no time to react as Vegeta slammed his elbow into Naruto's sternum, which sent the blonde Jinchuriki descending towards the ground. Naruto quickly landed on his feet and took a second to catch his breath, not from exhaustion, but to recover from the attack on his stomach. Naruto could see a slight trail of blood leaving the corner of Vegeta's mouth and smirked. You certainly are full of surprises, not only did you somehow multiply those stars of yours, but you hit pretty good too. For an earthling of course Vegeta said. You're not to bad yourself Naruto responded simply, he was not going to compliment Vegeta and give the Saiyan a reason for his ego to grow any bigger than it already was. But I hope you're not under the impression I'm using the extent of my abilities. Oh no, the games have just begun Vegeta said before he vanished and Naruto mimicked his movements. The two warriors became black specks that clashed with the other all around the mountainous landscape. The shock waves from their thunderous clashes would make the mountains around them crumble and fill the ground with multiple craters. Their images would sometimes manifest in the air showing brief glimpses of their high-speed battle. Naruto's image would be seen throwing a punch which Vegeta would catch, and then they would once again fade away. At other times it would be Vegeta's image showing trying to attack Naruto, but he would be dodging it before vanishing. Both warriors reappeared, Naruto's fist slammed into Vegeta's cheek, while the Saiyan prince had his knee planted firmly in Naruto's sternum. Naruto spun around and tried to deliver a skull-rattling roundhouse kick, but Vegeta managed to duck under the attack, grab the blonde Jinchurikis, and throw him towards a mountain. Naruto gracefully landed on his feet while Vegeta did the same on another mountain. Are you ready to end this little warm-up of ours Vegeta asked. Sure thing, ready whenever you are Naruto replied while popping his knuckles and rolling his neck. 
It's about time I show you Naruto why you are completely outmatched Vegeta clenched his fists while gathering his power. Naruto took notice how the environment around them seemed to react to Vegeta's rising power. The sunny and cloudless day suddenly began to darken with grey-coloured storm clouds. Pebbles and small chunks of the earth began to levitate off the ground as Vegeta drawled out more of his power. Vegeta seemed to glow with a dull yellow aura with white light ironing dancing around him. This Saiyan is a lot more powerful than I gave him credit for Naruto muttered. Indeed but you still haven't even show him the extent of your own abilities, Naruto Kurama commented while Naruto smirked as a gust of wind lashed across his face and whipped his hair in all directions. With a loud roar, Vegeta finally finished powering up. The sky seemed to return to normal, the clouds began to dissolve in the atmosphere, and the sun shined brightly upon the landscape. Naruto. Naruto turned around to see Vegeta with his regular cocky smile still plastered on his face. It's time for your demise without another word, Vegeta charged forward with more speed than he had previously. Once again Vegeta slammed his head into Naruto, or so he thought as the blonde was surrounded by smoke and a small shower of pebbles fell from the cloud. Awarimi Jutsu successful a voice said from behind Vegeta, who turned and was reintroduced to Naruto's fist. As the Saiyan went flying away, Naruto let out a small breath. That could have hurt had I not used the Kawarimi, it's time for me to get serious as well, Naruto was about to channel his own power before Vegeta sent a fireball sailing towards Naruto. Is that a Canton Jutsu or did he actually create a fireball using his Kai alone Naruto thought while avoiding the fireball. Vegeta began shoot volleys of fireballs at Naruto who flew low across the surface of the ground and heard the blasts detonate behind him. He could almost feel the heat from the fireballs while he expertly maneuvered around them. You want to play with fire Vegeta, well too can play this game Naruto blasted towards the Saiyan while going through hand seals. Anton. Goryuka no Jutsu a stream of fire left Naruto's lips and took on the form of a dragon who roared and dashed towards Vegeta. Vegeta was shocked to see the technique but was able to avoid the fire dragon in time. As it passed, he could feel the heat almost melt the metal off his Saiyan armor. Naruto figured with that Canton Jutsu distracting Vegeta, he could finally power up. Naruto channeled his power, and a blue aura with a white outline shrouded his body. While Vegeta managed to dodge the flaming dragon, he felt a strong power slam into his senses and looked to see Naruto was powering up. What is this, how could an earthling contain this much power? Vegeta shouted. The Saiyan was in complete shock, he couldn't believe an earthling of all creatures not only held his own against him, but his power seemed to surpass his as well. Vegeta's shock turned into fury while his teeth gritted in frustration. He would not allow Naruto to beat him, even if it was the last thing he ever did. With a shout, Vegeta dashed towards Naruto. Naruto smirked while dodging Vegeta's fist before slamming his own into the prince's gut. Naruto assaulted Vegeta with multiple punches before he had butted him and bashed Vegeta with one final kick that sent the Saiyan crashing through another unfortunate mountain. Naruto shook the numb feeling from his hand while waiting for Vegeta to recover from his attack. Punching the Saiyan's skin was almost like hitting a wall of bricks, but thanks to good old Kurama's healing, he didn't have to worry about any broken bones. Ah. The mountain exploded while Vegeta stood up and anyone with eyes could tell he was pissed off. A small trail of blood left his lip while Vegeta's face was covered in a few cuts and smudges of dirt. Naruto quickly summoned a few clones and sent them towards Vegeta who glared viciously. Vegeta ducked under a fist before punching the clone in the stomach and went to fight the other ones. While Vegeta was fighting his clones he didn't notice Naruto hold up his hands in another seal. Boom Naruto muttered. He watched in amusement as the clones that Vegeta were fighting exploded and sent the Saiyan tumbling through the air and created a massive hole in the side of a cliff. Face it Vegeta this fight was over before it even began. Just give up. Naruto called out. Meanwhile, the blackened and bruised Vegeta got back to his feet with a death glare directed towards Naruto, and if looks could kill, well Naruto would definitely be a pile of ashes on the ground. I'm a super elite this shouldn't be happening to me. I will not be humiliated like this especially not from this earth scum. He sealed his and this planet's fate, Vegeta said throat gritted teeth. Naruto watched as Vegeta's expression seemed to shift from anger to pissed off, and now it seemed like he reached insanity. Naruto. Dodge this if you can but know this. If you do then this precious little planet of yours will be reduced to space dust. Vegeta yelled out while a violet aura shrouded his body, and he took off too into the sky. What, you can't do that. Naruto screamed back, but it fell on deaf ears as Vegeta continued to gather energy within his palms. Damn it kid don't freeze up on me now. You have to do something, show this humanoid monkey what the Jinchuriki of the Great Kurama can really do the nine tails shouted within his mind, and despite the situation, Naruto couldn't help but sweat drop at the fox's comment. The blonde was mentally debating who had the larger ego, Kurama or Vegeta. 
I don't really have a signature Kai wave like Goku or Piccolo does, but this should do the trick, Naruto muttered while opening his right palm. A swirling handheld ball of energy with the force of a hurricane Aka the Rasengan formed in his hand. But this Rasengan was a pure snow white instead of its regular ocean blue. Naruto decided to add a little bit of his Futen Chakra into this attack. Now came the hard part, the Futen Rasengan was an technique completely made up of Chakra, which was more controlled and less destructive than its Kai counterpart. So Naruto right now was facing the task of mixing a Chakra attack with a Kai blast. It didn't help that a crazed Saiyan was about to blow up the earth, and Naruto had never attempted to mix his Kai and Chakra into one attack. Naruto could only guess how drained this could make him, but he had no other option. Small pebbles and rocks began to levitate off the ground, as both Vegeta and Naruto's attacks seemed to be so powerful they had their own center of gravity. The sun's rays glinted off the harsh violet color of the Gallic gun, while it seemed to sparkle on Naruto's Futen Rasengan. A few feet away, a fat swordsman by the name of Yajirab cowered in fear as he wished he had stayed home and consumed more ice cream before he died. Say goodbye Naruto, Gallic gun fire. Vegeta thrusted his hands forward and a violet beam of death descended from the sky and was headed towards our favorite blonde Jinchiriki. Naruto knew he had to rely on his useful good luck for this one. Guten. Race and Hamigan Naruto released the experimented technique and prayed to whatever divine being that watched over him to let it work. The Futen race and Hamigan looked like a complete combination of the Rasengan and the Kamehameha. Both blasts connected and shook the world around them. The Gallic gun and race and Hamigan filled the sky with a multitude of colors from purple, blue and a pearl white. Vegeta screamed in complete surprise as he tried to push more power into his technique, but Naruto's blast didn't seem to budge. No way it's impossible, his beam is as strong as my Gallic gun. Vegeta shouted. On the other side of the beam, Naruto was gritting his teeth in complete concentration. He was focusing on keeping the beam stabilized, which was not an easy task to accomplish. He was using his body's two sources of energy, and since both Chakra and Kai were completely different from the other, it was difficult to keep them merged while trying to push back Vegeta's Gallic gun. I don't know how long I can keep this technique up, so I've got only one shot at this. Came in Kai. Naruto shouted while his body filled with a new energy. The ground underneath Naruto buckled and snapped due to the massive release of pressure. But it seemed to work as the race in Hamigan completely destroyed Vegeta's Gallic gun before consuming the Saiyan himself in a gigantic column of light. Goku vs Nappa. A little earlier before the clash between the Gallic gun and race in Hamigan. Nappa's body bounced once, twice, three times before coming to a skidding stop. Nappa released a frustrated growl while glancing up at his opponent while trying to get the familiar taste of dirt to leave his mouth. Nappa stood up while cleaning the fresh blood that dripped from his lips. You low class come, I won't be humiliated by the likes of a bottom feeder such as yourself. Give up, there is no point in fighting anymore Goku said. Nappa's veins bulged in anger at the statement, he wouldn't let some low-class trash insult him like that. I am a member of an elite warrior race, you are nothing compared to me Nappa charged blinded by his own rage. Nappa released multiple combinations of punches and kicks, but Goku easily maneuvered around the attacks. Goku finally had enough, after ducking under another punch, he slammed his fist into Nappa's sternum, which caused the bigger warrior to fall to his knees. Nappa had to regurgitate the vial of vomit that almost shot out of his throat, he couldn't believe Kakarot brought him to his knees with one shot. Nappa quickly rocketed off into the sky and tried to create some distance between himself and Goku. While my dad is truly amazing Gohin said, his eyes were widened due to the scene before him. Goku was knocking the Saiyan around like he was some common house fly. Yeah Goku has gotten a lot stronger since we last saw him Krillin said. Goku appeared behind Nappa in an instant before ramming both his clenched fists into Nappa's skull. Nappa screamed in frustration and pain as he went dropping from the air, but not before Goku raced towards him and kicked him in the back. Nappa's body crashed through a boulder, shattering the top half of the rock and created a small cloud of dirt and rubble. That was for my friends Goku's tone was far from friendly when he said this. While Gohin and Krillin cheered in victory, Goku's onyx eyes never left the rock Nappa had crashed into. Within moments, the pile of rubble that laid on top of Nappa exploded. I hate you. Nappa shouted while chucking a rock as hard as he could towards Goku. The son of Bardock simply leaned to the side as the projectile sailed past his face. That's some strength you have, but it's sad you don't know how to use it properly, Goku said which infuriated Nappa even more. Damn it, what would Vegeta say if he seen me getting beat by Kakarot Nappa thought, trying to think of what his comrade would say to him. He would shout at him and tell him not to get so angry. Suddenly realization hit Nappa like a slap across the face. Kakarot was intentionally making him mad and that made all his attacks sloppy and easy to dodge. Nappa grinned in some sort of inner victory before wiping the blood from his mouth and letting out a few deep breaths. You're a tricky one Kakarot, getting me all worked up like that. 
from here on out now I'm a machine. Nappa's rage had finally subsided, now with a clear head Nappa was ready to continue the battle. That's what I'm talking about, now show me what you got Goku smiled while tensing his muscles, getting prepared for whatever attack Nappa might use next. You sure like to talk tough don't you? Nappa muttered before gathering the rest of his power. As the Saiyan's power increased, a cloak of yellowish white light ironing surrounded the muscular form of Nappa. With a deadly grin, Nappa simply lifted two fingers and a column of energy detonated right in front of everyone. Goku though had seen the attack coming, so he shot out of the giant smoke cloud Nappa's technique created. Nappa's eyes locked onto Goku in an instant. I can see you. Nappa shouted before shooting off to pursue his target. And thus a battle between the two warriors had begun in the air, with Goku and Nappa clashing against the other. Nappa could be seen throwing punches a lot faster than before while Goku would easily weave his way around them. Goku would retaliate, but noticed Nappa was able to block his own attacks, since his mind wasn't clouded by rage anymore. Both finally separated, but Goku had a wide grin on his face. Wow this is much more like it, Goku said while Nappa chuckled. I'm about to cram those words right back down your throat Nappa opened his mouth. Goku felt the gathering of energy from within Nappa's neck and knew he needed to act quickly. Without warning, a bright blast escaped from Nappa's mouth and sailed towards Goku who at the last moment was able to fire off a Kamehameha wave. Both blasts struggled against the other and shined as bright as any star in a clear night sky. The two Kai blasts exploded and a few waves of smoke covered the battlefield. Gohin and Krillin shielded themselves from the debris the two attacks summoned up. Nappa panted heavily, his energy drained and waited with anticipation to see the blackened remains of Kakarot falling to his death. But when the smoke cleared, Nappa was shocked beyond belief at the sight before him. Kakarot had his arms crossed and by the looks of it, there wasn't a single scratch on his body. That was my me best attack Nappa stuttered out. If I had taken that blast head on I would have been in some serious trouble Goku muttered. Nappa was inwardly troubled, he had unleashed his best techniques, but Kakarot had brushed them off like they were nothing. Nappa also wondered what was taking Vegeta so long, surely dealing with that blonde bastard couldn't be taking this long. What am I going to do? Nappa asked himself before his gaze lingered to Krillin and Kakarot's son. The Saiyan elite smirked viciously. Goku was instantly on guard at seeing the evil facial expressions Nappa was making. It's become real clear to me Kakarot that I can't beat you. So does that mean you'll give up now? Goku asked which sent Nappa into a fit of laughter. You're a real clown aren't you Kakarot? No if I can't beat you then I will do the next best thing Nappa's head quickly snapped towards Krillin's and Gohin's direction. Kill everyone that you love. Nappa screamed before flying towards the two as fast as he could. Goku was surprised and quickly went on pursuit of his foe. As the wind whipped against Goku's face, he noticed a gap between him and Nappa, he knew he wouldn't make it in time to save his son or friend. Meanwhile Nappa was gathering his remaining energy for one final attack, this next one would deplete his Kai, but it would be a great way to die, while well, seeing the anguish on Kakarot's face as he gazed on the ashes of his loved ones. Heiken. Goku's body was shrouded by an aura of red energy before he shot off towards Nappa with even greater speed. He closed the distance between them in seconds and smashed his fist into his exposed back. Nappa screamed in pain, he lost complete focus on his technique and he couldn't stop his fast free falling towards the ground. Goku instantly appeared under Nappa's gigantic form and thrusted his palm up which connected with the base of Nappa's spine. Nappa's screams died in his throat, the pain was now unbearable and he couldn't move a muscle in his body. With a grunt, Goku threw Nappa's body onto the ground and it responded with small violent twitches. He won't be able to fight anymore, Goku commented with a smile before looking to see Gohan and Krillin land next to him. So dad what should we do with him now Gohan asked. He can't fight anymore, so we will leave him here until his partner collects him and takes him away from Earth Goku says. I don't think that's a good idea Goku Krillin said which earned a confused look from his longtime friend. Why do you say that? Think about it Goku, if we leave him here it's possible that he could recover enough to start harming innocents while we're gone. Plus with the way you hit his back with that last hit, I think he's been paralyzed from the waist down, Krillin explained before all three heard a weak chuckle coming from below. The three Z fighters gazed to see Nappa glaring at them weakly. That bold bastard is right even now I can't feel my legs. Damn you Kakarot if I could move I would crush the monk's head into paste before moving on to your son, Nappa gave off a weak chuckle. You're no threat to us now big guy. We're going to go get your partner, and then you two will leave this planet alone Goku said, ignoring the small growl Nappa gave off. The three began to walk away from the fallen form of Nappa, which infuriated the defeated Saiyan even more. Damn you to hell you low class trash. I won't let you get the last laugh Nappa weakly raised his palm and aimed it towards Krillin's form. A small spark of Kai flared into Nappa's palm before it shaped into a ball. Nappa knew this last attack would kill the monk. 
As Nappa's vision began to blur, he only wished he could see Kakarot's face as he watched his loved one die. Squelch. The vial of blood escaped Nappa's mouth while a white hot pain burned every nerve in his body. Nappa could only see the hilt of Kakarot's brat sword as the weapon was buried within his stomach. Gohan had been the only one to sense Nappa's last bit of growing power and only reacted on instinct. He had quickly spun around and threw Crimson Death as hard as he could, which had successfully pierced Nappa's stomach. Goku and Krillin turned and a look of horror flashed across their faces at the sight before them. Gohan's hand was outstretched and shaking, while the fallen form of Nappa not only had a blade in his gut but had coughed up a good amount of blood and he seemed to be shaking. When the two appeared by Nappa's side, the Saiyan's movement stopped and both noticed the glazed look of death in his eyes. Son Gohan had taken his first life that day. Gohan what did you do that for Goku demanded with a frown on his face. His features morphed instantly from anger to regret when Gohan began to cry. His son fell on his backside and he shook with sorrow. I, I didn't mean to, but I could feel that he was about to attack and I reacted on instinct, I swear Gohan wailed out while Krillin inspected Nappa's body before he sighed. He's right Goku, Nappa by the looks of it was going to try and fire off one last blast which was aimed towards me. Knowing the Saiyan it would have probably been a kill shot too. Your son actually just saved by life, but at the price of taking his first one, Krillin said while hearing Gohan puke out his breakfast. Goku patted his son on the back as he continued to release the contents of his stomach. When Gohan finished up, he looked at his father with red puffy eyes. You're not mad at me are you dad? Gohan asked, his voice was barely above a whisper. He didn't want his father to be angry with him for taking the life of the Saiyan. No Gohan I'm not mad at you. Well I don't like that you killed the Saiyan over there it saved Krillin's life, so I guess there's no reason for me to be upset, is there Goku finished with a smile, while well, Gohan nodded before accepting the help his father offered him, which pulled him to his feet. Goku placed both hands on his son's shoulders and had him look the older Saiyan in the eyes. As long as you don't enjoy taking live son especially the ones of the innocent, then I will never be upset with you, Gohan nodded with a sniffle before going over and getting his sword back. The son of Goku flinched slightly as he pulled out the sword, he could feel the blade cut against the inner flesh of the corpse. The blade of Crimson Death was stained with blood and Gohan was all too eager to clean it in the grass. While Gohan cleaned his sword, Goku looked towards his longtime friend. Krillin I want you to take Gohan home now, I can feel two massive powers clashing not too far away from here and I will be heading over there. I don't want you or Gohan to be caught in the middle of it. Okay Goku said with a stern voice which surprised Krillin at first. Sure thing Goku. Thanks Krillin and keep Gohan safe Goku had no doubt his son could defend himself now, but with him taking his first life today, he will probably still be shaken up. Goku could still remember when he took his first life, the true demon king Piccolo. Goku knew the Piccolo that had mentored his son wasn't the same Piccolo that he defeated because if he was he wouldn't have taken the time to train Gohan for the Saiyans. Without another word Goku flew off towards the battle that was taking place between the Saiyan Prince Vegeta and everyone's favorite orange Hokage Naruto Uzumaki. With our favorite Saiyan Prince. Vegeta felt the race in him again push him closer towards the atmosphere and the Saiyan knew that if it pushed him into outer space then he was screwed. He couldn't breath in space like that bastard Frieza could. With a major grunt of effort, he pushed himself off the blast. Vegeta watched as the blast disappeared into the cold deep depths of space before his body shook in anger, frustration and pain. The anger and frustration from being defeated by that blonde bastard Naruto and the pain from the race in Hamigan. Vegeta could have sworn small blades of wind were digging into his back when he was riding that fucking technique. How could that fucking low-class piece of garbage's power be higher than my own? It's just not possible. Vegeta screamed. After a moment of venting his anger he finally calmed down. Vegeta began to analyze his situation, he obviously couldn't defeat Naruto and he absolutely refused to run away, that was the coward's way out. Then he briefly felt Nappa's snuff out of existence which caused the Saiyan to release a small sigh while muttering about idiot partners. But Nappa out of the way Kakarot will be on his way here and even I can't take on both at once in my current state. What to do? Vegeta tapped his chin and thought before a devious idea came to mind. I use this technique to crush armies and now I'm going to be forced to use it to crush two simple bugs. Oh well Vegeta had come up with the idea to use his Azeru form to finally finish off the blonde pest and Kakarot. Now all he needed to do was find the source of his transformation, the moon. Naruto was still panting, even though it had been around 5 to 10 minutes since he had blasted Vegeta into the atmosphere. The race in Hamigan surely drained him a lot more than he thought, but then again it was still an untested technique which required the use of both Chakra and Kai. Naruto knew the Saiyan was still alive up there otherwise he would have felt his opponent's power deplete. Naruto also had recently felt the vanish of Nappa's life force as well. 
it seems Kakarot defeated the muscle-inflated buff and Naruto commented which earned a snort from Kurama. I wouldn't worry about that trash brat, I would worry more about the crazed space monkey that wants to end your existence and blow this planet to dust the fox said. But what could he possibly be doing, he should know by now he can't beat me in a straight up fight. What do you think fox? How the hell should I know? The only advice I can give you right now is to be prepared for anything. Thanks for being such a big help Kurama Naruto muttered sarcastically before cutting off the connection with the fox. Naruto watched as Vegeta stormed down from the sky above with a look of pure hatred on his face. You bastard, what have you done with the moon? It's gone. Vegeta screamed which earned a look of confusion from his blonde foe. The moon, why would you be worried about that? Naruto wondered why the Saiyan was so worried about the moon of all things. It was then when Naruto's eyes gazed to the brown furry thing wrapped around Vegeta's waist, it was a tail. Naruto now understood what he wanted to do, transform into that giant ape-like creature. You must have prepared for this and gotten rid of the moon in advance Vegeta's features morphed from rage to his useful cocky smirk. But there is more than one way to transform Vegeta raised his palm and a bright white ball of energy appeared. We Saiyans long ago found out we were at the mercy of the moon, so we came up with a way to help us transform, should the need arise. We've created our own moon like Vegeta said before throwing the ball of light up into the atmosphere. Naruto destroy that ball of light now. Naruto didn't need to be told twice. Vegeta seemed to know what Naruto had planned and shot off an extra blast which caused the mountain underneath to crumble and throw Naruto off balance for a moment. That moment was all Vegeta needed. Say goodbye Naruto. When the ball stopped in the sky, Vegeta clenched his fist and the ball expanded all the while laughing. Then the transformation began as Vegeta's onyx eyes vanished to show complete white. His teeth sharpened to a point and he seemed to be getting bigger. This is so not good Naruto muttered. But Goku. Goku was flying across the sky as fast as he could, the world a blur around him at the speeds he was moving at. Goku could see a white sphere rise into the sky before expanding. Then a monstrous Kai flooded his senses. What is going on over there? Whatever it is, I can tell it's probably something bad Goku said. Goku knew that the other Saiyan's power took a large leap and it seemed to be connected with that white ball. Goku could only hope Naruto would survive long enough for him to arrive on time. He really wanted to meet the blonde and thank him for training his son and maybe later have a spar with him. Be safe Naruto, I will be there as soon as I can. What if Naruto was Biju Sage Saiyan in Dragon Ball and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.